You are looking live at the reservation as a region championship will be decided. Tonight, game 12 on the 2020 slate for the Southwestern Warriors as they return home to battle the team that has become a familiar deep in the playoffs foe in the Frederick Douglass Broncos. Hello, my friends. Alongside Michael Gregg, I'm Josh McKinney, Kevin Lloyd, and Jeremiah Jones. On the hand tonight, Quick Care Walk-In Clinic High School Football. Presented by the Don Franklin Family of Dealerships on Lake Cumberland Sports. Welcome to the Buffalo Wings and Rings video game of the week. Michael, good evening. Good it's evening, sir. It's blue and Orange versus the Broncos for a second straight year and for another region crown. The only difference, the venue. And that's a big difference, Josh. Yes, it is. Being able to host this game, I think, is a huge advantage for Southwestern. Um, they went up there last year, and I think even to some of the players on admission, a little shell-shocked uh, last year in that 44-8 defeat. Uh, this year, uh, different agendas on the minds of the Warriors. Very well said. And, of course, you know, Frederick Douglass, a, a turf field here, sod, natural grass, Whole lot of rain this week, whole lot of rain today, cloudy. Sprinkles right now, 43 as the uh, field, as you can see. You can see the uh, the gleam off the field as it rained heavily overnight and throughout the day today. Yeah, sloppy football field here tonight. Um, certainly not what Frederick Douglass is used to playing on. Uh, Southwestern, you know, maybe has a slight advantage there, Josh. Um, Southwestern, a running team. Um, not to say that Frederick Douglass much more offensively balanced. Uh, they've got some talent. They got a talented running back as well, but they like to throw the ball around a much more mm -hmm. than Southwestern does. So uh, we'll see how the playing surface uh, factors into that. Well, those are the conditions that Mother Nature has uh, dealt. Southwestern, 186 and 138 program history. Coach Jason Foley, his second season at the helm at Southwestern, 16 and 7 in that time. Coach, 41 and 13 overall in his coaching career. His Warriors 10 and 1 overall, winning their 10th district championship last Friday night over Pulaski County. They are riding a four game winning streak with Dubs over Madison Central on the road 41 35, Bullet Central on the road 49 33, Whitley County in the opening rounds of the playoffs here at the reservation 42 15, and then most recently last Friday night at PC, a big 35 14 victory for the uh, Blue and Orange. They are playing really good ball. They are, Josh, and, and we've talked to Coach, uh, talked about this. Running the football is what Southwestern likes to do. That's their identity. Uh, they do it well. The offensive line has played phenomenal. Uh, not a single senior on that offensive line, I might add. Uh, they rushed for, I think it was 396 in that first round playoff matchup against Whitley and topped that off with over 400 last week against their crosstown rival Pulaski. Uh, so they are hitting on all cylinders offensively in that running game, and they hope to carry that momentum uh, through this game tonight. That victory over uh, PC last week certainly eased the uh, the lone setback on the season, which came at the hands of the Maroons here at the reservation back in October. In that game last week, offensive player of the game, Connor Chris, defensive player of the game was uh, Dylan Asher. And, Michael, you just mentioned it. The key stats from that win last week for uh, Full East Boys, they rushed for 406 yards, three backs over 100 yards. They controlled the clock and the ball. That is a recipe to beat Frederick Douglass tonight. Yes, and in addition to those three backs that rushed over 100 yards, you know, they had that young freshman, um, Christian Walden, that came in and yeah. scored a big touchdown run in that fourth quarter uh, and showing faith in that freshman run the football in a playoff a uh, high-stakes atmosphere. I mean, you just can't say anything more about that other than, and you've mentioned this, Josh, you come out here for Coach Foley and Foley's boys and you put in work, and you're going to get rewarded. Absolutely. Very well said. Southwestern averaging 33 points a game, giving up 20 points per second ever meeting with Frederick Douglass. As Southwestern lost in Lexington last year, November 22nd, a cold and damp night that you and I, my friend, will vividly remember for the rest of our natural lives. You bet. Uh, that was a game that you and I called from the top of the box at Frederick Douglass and, um, and sat next to a speaker that I think you mentioned more than one time yeah. that was as large as a Volkswagen. It was. And my wife and I have laughed about that for a solid year. <laughs> Uh, and so this week, having a familiar foe in Frederick Douglass, we've had to reminisce about oh, yeah. a year ago. So uh, here we are in much more friendlier confines for you and I. Absolutely. Big thanks to Alex Eaton for that. Absolutely. We appreciate uh, A.D. Eaton and everybody here. 
Southwestern for the Warriors, their fifth straight region championship, six in the last seven years. They lost to Douglas last year, 44-8 to PC in 2018, to Harlan County in 2017, to PC again in 2016. And then you go back to 2014, Southwestern lost to uh, PC, their first home region title game since 2017, Southwestern with a lone region crown. That coming in 2011, that was a W over Harlan County, 28 to 21 here at the reservation in overtime. Frederick Douglas, coached by Nathan McPeak, his first season at the helm of a program that's only about four years old. Six and one, Frederick Douglas is district champs. They are riding a six game winning streak after dropping their season opener in a uh, tight win at home versus North Harden, 1917. Since then, W's over Ballard, Grant County, Lexington Christian, Montgomery County, and then into the playoffs, Great Crossing, most recently Scott County last Friday night, a, a big win for the Broncos as they top Scott County 39-21. to Big W to get Frederick Douglass here tonight. And they did that at their place, Josh. That's right. Yeah, yeah. so it's a road warrior team in this Frederick Douglass Bronco team, a team that uh, I think you've already mentioned played seven games this season as Correct. opposed to, you know, Southwestern's full slate. So we've been real blessed with a full slate of games, and Frederick Douglass has not been as fortunate there. And you look at uh, the games that Frederick Douglass lost this year, they lost two for sure and, and probably a third. You know, it's it's amazing. You and I have talked about it all year long. You know, if you would have told us two weeks before our coaches show that Southwestern would have played a full slate of games what they played – you know, 12 games tonight, we would have looked at you like you were crazy Yeah, with everything going on. Absolutely. They've had a lot of things go their way and been very fortunate, uh, you know, following the safety protocols that have been put in place. Uh, but it's a lot of luck. I mean, let's be honest. True. A lot of luck That's because true. the teams that are on the schedule have also been able to have games that week. And so uh, it's been a great season for Southwestern. Um, you know, last week I want to say one commonality that I see – uh, Record-wise, Pulaski County lost their first game of the year. Yep, uh, You're right. against Belfry. Uh, this South, this Frederick Douglass team lost their first game of the year. North Harden, I believe, Josh. You're correct. Uh, and they've not been beat since. And so, uh, somebody's going to taste defeat tonight. And there's two really high-quality opponents matching up here in the regional chi- regional title regional title game. Absolutely, very well said. And credit Frederick Douglass, you know, battling through Fayette County being uh, shut down in sports, uh, sheltered for a while. Playing for a regional championship tonight. They averaged 43 points a game, giving up 13 points per in the second meeting versus Southwestern as uh, Douglas won last year. The region championship, 44-18 at home. There's their third regional title game in the school's only fourth year of existence. That's fairly stout. Second straight appearance. Their other appearance came in 2017. That was a loss to Scott County, 45-13. With that said, enough of us. Can we hear from the Southwestern ball coach himself, Coach Jason Foley? It's the Coach Jason Foley Show on Lake Cumberland Sports. This is Michael Gregg with Lake Cumberland Sports. I'm sitting down with head ball coach Jason Foley of the Southwestern Warriors, uh, back-to-back district champion Southwestern Warriors, I might add. Coach, how you doing? I'm doing good. Uh, first and foremost, congratulations on a huge win last week. Um, that was a game where – uh, you know, the only blemish on your record this season was a loss here at the reservation against that same Pulaski squad. Uh, it was a tough contest, came down to the wire. Uh, this time around, a uh, different outcome, one that uh, got you some hardware in the district championships. I know you're excited about that. Um, we're going to break that, da- that game down a little bit here because I feel like it deserves it. Uh, but before I do that, uh, how are you feelings? How you feel about that performance last week, Coach? Got to feel good. Well, yeah, I'm very proud of the way our, our players came out and, and played the game. You know, we felt like we had a lot of confidence going into the game. We felt like, you know, the first game prior in the year that we did, really didn't play our best football game. And I thought uh, last Friday night we were able to display kind of what we're about, both offensively and defensively and special teams. I thought all three phases. Uh, played well throughout the game, and and we kind of did what we wanted to do, and and we got the outcome that we wanted. So you said you kind of did what you wanted to do. So rushing for over 400 yards is kind of what you wanted to do. (laughs) Yeah, you (laughs) you take 400 yards rushing any time. And, uh, you know, um, it was just a great performance, uh, of course, from our offensive line, first of all. I want to mention them. I think they've gotten better, a, a lot better, and because I've seen it in practice for two or three weeks now, how well he's playing. But he came in there, Connor went down with a little bit of an injury, and he filled right in and, and did a great job. 
And, Coach, you mentioned that offensive line, and we, we certainly gave them a lot of credit in our broadcast, and we've tried to do that all season because you're right. They've played phenomenal. And, and let me mention again, too, not a senior on that offensive line, so you're stocked and ready for next season, but not so fast. we got to get this one done first. Um, but, yeah, big-time credit to the offensive line. Um, in this matchup, uh, offensively, you threw two passes. So that's another big thing for that offensive line. Defensively, the other team kind of knows what your bread and butter is. They know what to prepare for. Uh, and still, even despite that, Southwestern making holes and just making room for those running backs to run. Uh, defensively, something that I felt like was a big difference from that first matchup in the regular season to last week's matchup in the playoffs was your defensive front was able to put some pressure on Duggar and I didn't feel like they were able to do that in that regular season matchup. What was the difference there, Coach? Well, you know, the first time we played him, of course, we'd kind of prepared or expected Drew Poston most of the season. And he and Duggar's a little bit different. And I think our game plan this second time around after seeing him one time, we had a little bit better understanding of what his strengths and weaknesses were. And uh, I thought our guys did a good job of getting pressure on him, but a lot of times not overrunning him either. Um, you know, the first game, it felt like we overran him a whole lot. And, and he still made us miss a few times, but I thought our guys did a good job of about getting back there, putting the heat on him, and making him rush some passes. And uh, so we did a good job with that. And then, like I said, defensive coaches come up with a great game plan as far as scheming for him too. And, and I thought the, the kids executed that plan very well. So another comparison of the first matchup and the second match, matchup. Got to uh, – can't do a comparison unless we talk about um, how you handled Tristan Cox offensively. Um, that first time around, uh, when it got late in that game, uh, they run the wild pirate, they like to call it over there across town. And it was Cox, Cox, and more Tristan Cox. And he's a load. Uh, and he's still a load last week. Uh, but defensively, your guys were able to bottle him up. He has 16 yards on 14 carries, and that's not a, a shot at his him as a player. He's a fantastic player. I think defensively, your guys were ready and were just determined uh, not to get beat the same way they got beat earlier in the season. Yeah, you're exactly right. You know, Tristan, first of all, give him a lot of credit. You know, he's a Division One football player uh, going to Purdue, and obviously he's a great player. Um, the first game, you know, I felt like we did a good job on him in the backfield when, when he was taking handoffs, but when he went to that Wildcats where he kind of caused some problems late in the game. But we did a, a good job making adjustments. Um, we prepared very well throughout the week for that. And, uh, again, I thought our kids, you know, displayed what they had prepared for and did a great job shutting him down in the, in the rushing attack. And so one more time, you, you mentioned already you had three rushers with over 100 yards. Uh, I'm going to give them some credit here and call them by name. Gideon Brainerd had uh, 16 attempts. Most of those came in the second half. I think he had two in the first half. And that's something you've shown the ability to, to like to do all season is when that game gets later in the game, Gideon gets harder to tackle. But Gideon had 135 yards on 16 carries and a touchdown, averaging a little over eight yards a carry. Connor Crisp had 120 on eight carries, averaging 15, which is just, I mean, phenomenal. Of course, that big run early that set the tone, I felt like, helped the average. Uh, Tanner Wright, who's been a workhorse for you all season and been you know working those legs and fighting for extra yards, he had another fantastic game, uh, 101 on 14 carries and two touchdowns, averaging over seven. And Christian Walden chimed in with 48 yards on just five carries. Again, just a young freshman. Uh, Got to be fantastically pleased about the performance, though, last week from the running game. Yeah, I mean – I've said all year, you know, it's a three-headed monster uh, with Gideon and Tanner and Connor. And they all are a little bit different in their running style, and so I think it presents defenses a lot of problems. You know, you've got Gideon's the big bulldozer. You've got Connor, who's the kind of the scat quick back. And then Tanner's a little bit of a combination of both who sees the field very well. And uh, they, they all three played great. Gideon, he just wears on teams. You get into the second half, you know, he's 220 pounds, and he just becomes harder and harder to tackle. And he gets hungrier and hungrier, too, I think, as the game goes, because he knows he sees the teams wearing down. And so he's just looking to, to punish you. And uh, he really has had an outstanding year, and along with the other two as well. But um, – I was just very proud of, of the way they ran the ball and the way we blocked as well. And, you know, we we thought about, you know, we had a lot of things in our passing game that we felt like was there, but we were moving the football so well, uh, just really didn't feel like there was a reason to get away from it. And defensively, um, our player of the game was Dylan Asher. Um, Dylan Asher made some big plays, but he wasn't the only guy on that defense that made big plays. Uh, Cody Harmon, Roe Pennington, 
Uh, Ian Ware had an interception. He may have had more than one interception. I, I don't have the stat line in front of me. Uh, I think he actually made a pick that got called off on a penalty. And then he made sure that pick got credited. A couple plays later, he picks the ball again. Um, defensively, Coach, you got to be pleased with how your team fought in that playoff battle there across town. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned Dylan Asher. Um, I think that kid plays his best ball when we play Pulaski County. You Agreed. know, <laughs> he, he he gets up for it. He loves that atmosphere. He loves that game. And, again, this year he played outstanding. Cody Harmon, you know, I think you see the difference he makes. Uh, he's been such an emotional and, and physical leader for us all year. Rowan Pennington had his best week of practice last week, and I thought he came out and led the linebacker core great. You mentioned the guys in the secondary. Ian Ware had a really good game. And uh, I thought, you know, Josh Walden come up with a big play there late, kind of similar to last year. And uh, so, brag on the secondary, Ethan Ware, Mason Hibbard, they was all making plays. And so, I thought overall, defense played a great game. And Alex Farler had a pick, too. Uh, uh, kid tipped the ball. I'm not really sure who that was. It was 35. I don't have my roster in front of me. Uh, Farler makes a nice pick. Um, let's, let's use that, talking about the secondary coach, as a segue into this upcoming week. Um, Frederick Douglass. Uh, a, a rematch from the regional championship game from last season. Uh, but a few things have changed from last season. Uh, you, your team obviously has uh, got better. Uh, your team is uh, coming in 10-1, and one, not the same record you had last year. Uh, I will say the one commonality, though, is you seem to be peaking at the right time of the year. Um, but your secondary probably going to factor into the outcome of this game. Um, so talking about some of those young, young men, what's the challenges that lie ahead for this secondary, and they're going to face arguably, and maybe not arguably, the best receiving core that they've faced all year. Well, there's no doubt about it. You know, that, that's kind of Frederick Douglass. That's what they're known for, you know, speed, athleticism, playmaking ability. And, uh, you know, it's going to put some pressure on our defensive secondary. There's no doubt about it. There's no way around it. They also have a good running game, so it's not like you can sell out uh, – in the secondary because you got to be able to stop their run too. But, again, you mentioned it. I mean, I think our kids are playing with a lot of confidence. You know, I have a lot of confidence in them. And I think they're going to come out here and make plays. You know, that's what we think they're going to do. And uh, I think they're ready for the challenge. And they've, they've worked hard all week and they're preparing hard. And uh, I look forward to seeing them compete. Uh, it, offensively, Coach, I know, you know, last week you threw two passes. Um, offensively, your game plan going into this matchup against Douglas, uh, anything new? You, I mean, it's been run heavy, run heavy, but you've had a whole lot of success. I mean, you're averaging 400 yards on the ground. Um, you got to think that maybe 400 might be overzealous thinking that's going to happen this week. But offensively, what are you hoping your game plan to accomplish there uh, this week for regional title? Well, you know, we're not going to change our identity too much, you know, for this game. Obviously, there's some things that, that we may have to do different than we have the last couple of games. I mean, uh, if they if they want to take away – try to take away our run and they want to stack the box completely and we can't move it, then we'll, we'll do some play action passing and, and try to open it up with our passing game. We've got capable receivers. Uh, Chandler, you know, he, he can throw a good ball. Uh, when he's on, you know, you, you've seen different games this year where he's made some big-time plays. And so I think uh, I think our receiving core is ready if, if their number's called to make plays too. And But we want to we want to establish the run, and we wanna, we're going to try to make them stop us too. And let's see what they can do with, with our backfield and, and our offensive line. Yeah, for fans that may uh, just be tuning in earlier in the season, right here at this uh, field, uh, Crabtree threw for five touchdowns earlier in the season. So absolutely capable quarterback and a more than capable receiving core. It's just you've not had to utilize those folks because the running game's just been so effective. Um, so, Coach, um, how do you – has there been any additional motivation needed this week? Um, going in, it's a lot on the line. I think it's a testament that you're playing in December, first and foremost. Congratulations there. Um, but I guess – any additional motivation that's needed this time of year? I know with school being out, you couldn't be doing this in a more non-traditional way, but you've made the most of it all year, and really that hasn't changed all year. Yeah, I, that's the thing that's made me so proud about this team is, you know, we've had the COVID situation that we've dealt with all season long, and they've just kept coming, and they've not missed a beat. Uh, they kind of put their, their hard hat on and just go to work. You know, they've kind of got a business-like approach. And, uh, you know, they're not a big raw raw team, but week in and week out, they come ready to play. And so I think as far as motivation goes, you know, we obviously want to win a region championship. You know, I mean, we, we've got several runner-ups in the last few years, and that's something we want to bust the door down and do. And uh, I think, you know, we've talked about it uh, with the kids the last few few 
days about just knocking that door down and make something special happen, make history. And so I think they want to do it. I think they're going to come out and give their greatest effort. Coach, I'm glad you used the term business like because that's my colleague Josh McKinney has mentioned that, that, that this team has a business like approach. And uh, that's a credit to you and your coaching staff that uh, you, you're doing what you're doing because you expect to do it. It's not uh, unexpected, not surprisingly. So uh, I'm just going to close out here, Coach. I want to congratulate you and your staff on a fantastic season and a back to back district championship. Uh, real proud of, of Warrior Nation. I want to encourage all of our uh, Warrior Nation out there to come out here and support this squad. Uh, if you've not seen them, you, they deserve your attention because they are a team to uh, pay attention to. Coach, good luck to you Friday as you vie for a regional title here at the reservation. Thank you, Michael, and I want to thank uh, Lake Cumberland Sports. And I do want to say a special thanks to, to all of Warrior Nation. You know, we've had a lot of support. Uh, this week, a lot of people backing us, and we want to invite you out to the game and or watch and, and listen. So we appreciate it. Don't feel great? Just can't wait? Quick Care's open late. Just walk in for accidents and illnesses or for health services like physicals and flu shots. Quick Care Walk-In Clinic at Med Park West for over a decade on Hale Knob Road, just behind the hospital. The people of this great land are resilient and will get through this. And buying and selling is the real stimulus. Land and real estate are the premium investments, and they're not just making any more land. At Ford Brothers Auctioneers, we'll get you the most for your property with live, online, and multi-parcel auctions. Selling farms, homes, developments, and commercial properties for top dollar. Give us a call or online at FordBrothersInc.com. Since 1988, Toyota of Somerset has been serving and supporting our local communities. We want you to know that we are here for you and your family. Someone you can trust. Someone you can count on. Now and for the better days to come. Trusted. Loyal. Dedicated. Helpful and consistent. Toyota of Somerset. Come see us or visit us online at toyotaofsomerset.com. Don't feel great? Just can't wait? Quick Care's open late. Just walk in for accidents and illnesses or for health services like physicals and flu shots. Quick Care Walk-In Clinic at Med Park West for over a decade on Hale Knob Road, just behind the hospital. Okay, Josh, so we talked to Coach Foley. Coach Foley talked about uh, keys to victory, keys to the game. I think you've got to look at turnovers tonight. Absolutely. I think you've got to look at time of possession, limit the time that Frederick Douglass can have the football. Uh, Southwestern has, has had a lot of success running the football, eating the clock, moving the chains. If they can do that tonight and keep the ball away from Douglass, uh, they're going to have a puncher's chance to win this football game. Southwestern is approaching this game like they're going to win this football game. You have to. You got to. Uh, but there has been some talk. And, you know, last year this matchup – was certainly lopsided. This year, there's some different elements. Absolutely. We're, we're home, 10-1 um, and one on the season. They've taken care of business, business-like. Coach Foley has led that effort, uh, so let's see if they can take care of some unfinished business tonight. Uh, so those are the keys of the game. They're brought to you by Widest Cabinets. At Widest Cabinets, they provide their customers with friendly service, and they value your business, and it is their mission to provide reliable products and services. The courteous and professional team at Widest Cabinet Design Center could turn your vision into reality. Visit the Widest Cabinet Design Center on the corner of South 27 and St. Branch Road to learn more about what they can do for you. Josh, I want to talk about our starters tonight for Southwestern. Um, offensively, uh, we just talked about the success they've had running the football, so let's certainly start with credit to the offensive line. Absolutely. Left tackle, 6'3", 260-pound, Braden Myers, he's a sophomore. Left guard, junior, Matthew Loy, 6'2", 250. Center sophomore Tyler Russell, he's six foot two sixty five. Right guard John Poe, he's a junior, he's 5'11", 190. Right tackle Maddox Mink, he's a junior, 5'11", 225. Taken uh, under center tonight will be Chandler Crabtree, he's a senior, 5'11", 165. Run the football and they run it well. 
they're led by a three-headed monster, really. Tanner Wright, Jr., number seven, he's 5'9", 175. Number 40, Gideon Brainerd. And, folks, you're going to watch him tonight. He has been a load to tackle all season long. And if he can have the same success tonight he's had this season, I like Southwestern's chances tonight. Absolutely. Gideon Brainerd, number mm -hmm. 40, he's a junior. He's 5'10", 220. Don't let the 220 fool you. He can run. If you watched last week's game, he's got breakaway speed. He's got runaway separation speed as well. Uh, our player of the game last week, senior number eight, Connor Crisp. He's 5'8", 165, and, yeah, he can run. Uh, Wideouts, uh, Mason Hibbard, Jr., 5'11", 150. Uh, and, folks, these wideouts don't get a lot of cred and a lot of pub because they run the football so well. If the game plan calls for it, they've got the talent at the wide, wide receivers. Uh, sophomore, number 11, Caden Hewitt, 6'2", 175. And then another senior, Alex Farler, number 22, 5'7", and 150. Um, tied in is sophomore Brody Perkins, number led by senior number four, Rowan Pennington, 5'11", 175. Uh, sophomore Hagen Galloway, 5'11", 210. Senior Connor Crisp, number eight, 5'8", 165. And young sophomore, number 24, Christian Kelly, 5'11", and 215. You'll see some names popping in and out of there as well. A uh, name to watch for, a couple names. Uh, freshman Ben Coomer, number 30, 5'8", uh, 170. And sophomore, if he's healthy, because he's not been the last few weeks, uh, at full speed, number 20, Nathan Vanover, sophomore, 5'10", 175. Cornerback, big night uh, last week, number two, Ian Ware. He's a senior, 5'10", 170. On the other side of the corner, number three, sophomore, J.J. Hutchinson. You're going to see a lot. Uh, J.J.'s 5'9", 170. Also, senior, number one, Ethan Ware, 5'9", 145. Safeties, Mason Hibbard, junior, 5'11", 150. On the other safety, you're going to see Ethan Ware, 5'9", 145. You will see Josh Walden back there in the defensive backfield, number 12. He's a senior, 5'7", 135. And Christian Walden, young freshman, number 29, 5'9", 165. Um, Josh, Frederick Douglass has had a lot of success throwing the football. And you and I were talking just a little bit earlier before we went on the air. Um, Southwestern's defensive secondary going to have to play big tonight. Absolutely. Um, to keep the ball in front of them. Not let the receivers get behind them. That's happened a few times when we've we've covered games this year. That's right. Got to be on their toes tonight, uh, and this a lot is going to be determined really early in this football game. Can Southwestern bring the intensity needed to knock off this Frederick Douglass football team? Going to be a big one tonight. A region championship on the line as the Warriors take the field in those uh, fire new blue uniforms trimmed in orange and white. Frederick Douglass. Across the way, you will see momentarily in the uh, white tops and uh, dark green uh, bottoms your KHSAA officials tonight. The referee at Danny Salee, the umpire Jeff Morgan, the linesman Meacham, the uh, line judge Tim Jesse, the back judge A.J. Hanner, the side judge Cameron Edwards, and the field judge is Daniel Rogers. My colleague Josh McKinney brought you the Fashion Report. The Fashion Report is brought to you by Magic Monograms. Magic Monograms is conveniently located off North Highway 27 between Big Lots and Backyard Burger. Magic Monograms is the place for custom embroidery, screen printing, and so much more. They can put your designs on medical and athletic uniforms, corporate and school apparel. Find them on Facebook. Search Magic Monograms and Embroidery. And here we go, Josh, for the third game in a row. Southwestern is going to kick the football uh, so they're going to defer to the second half. And Southwestern will send it away right to left. Thanks for settling in with us on a uh, damp night at the reservation. A region championship on the line, Southwestern and uh, Frederick Douglass. So Warriors will converge and send it away. New York sends it away to the 28, picked up and returnable. Back to the uh, middle of the field goes uh, Horton. As he'll be uh, cut down. Coming back across the near home sideline to the Frederick Douglass sideline. It'll be first and ten for the Broncos as they move left to right. Again, region title on the line. Southwestern ten and one. Frederick Douglass six and one. Ball spotted. At 35 to the far visitor hash. Cornet in as quarterback for the Broncos. As Douglas operates out of the gun. Cornet claps those hands, takes the snap, hands it off to Neal. He's met in the backfield and dropped Dylan Asher. Good pursuit to the football as Asher had a big week last week. First play of the game. He will take Neal down for a, uh, a gain of one. Second and nine. 
just underway. Thanks for joining us. Buffalo Wings and Rings video game of the week. Second and nine for Douglas. They fire near sideline. As that'll be incomplete as Connor Crisp and applying the pressure. It will be dropped. Third and nine. Good start for the Southwestern defense. And Frederick Douglas in a third and long here. We talked about the field, Josh, on that first kickoff there. We had a few defenders hit the ground. The returner hit the ground. So let's see how that develops as the night goes on. Absolutely. A lot of rain overnight and all throughout the day. Still some sprinkles falling now. Third and nine. And shotgun set. Three man front for the Warriors. And whistles. As the crowd gets lively. With the reservation. That will back Douglas up. Third and nine becomes a third and 14. 11 19 to go, opening quarter. Scoreless on the Randall D. Turpin CPA School Board. Douglas with the first crack at it here tonight. Defeating Southwestern last year. Gwinnett takes the snap. Under pressure from Harmon. Fires a BB downfield as overshot his man by a good two, three, four yards trying to connect deep with Cameron Dunn. Yes. It's too much on that pass downfield. Fourth down. Here comes the punting unit from Fred McDouglas. Michael, good start for the Blue and Orange. Absolutely, and I saw Christian Kelly hopping back on that field. Love these jerseys. You mentioned earlier how easy you can see the numerals. The mud may have something to say about that as this game goes on. <laughs> yeah. Well, a whole lot of tide after this one tonight. Warrior D, forcing a four now. Fourth and 14 as Douglas will boot it away. Slow boot as that will be returnable. Chris gingerly coming to the near sideline. Wanted to get to the corner. Excuse me, Hibbard wanted to get to the corner. You can see him pat, 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 pat with those feet trying to get that corner, get to that edge. Hold it on to that football. That's going to be a key tonight as Got that one away for Douglas. First and 10 for uh, Southwestern as they have their first series of the night. 10 59 to go, opening quarter. Scoreless on the Randall D. Turpin CPA scoreboard. Southwestern riding a four game winning streak since their lone loss of the season. Frederick Douglas, a six game winning streak since a season opening loss. Crabtree operates out of the gun. Tanner right to his left. Crisp comes in motion. Three man front for Douglas. Trips to the right, one to the left. As Tanner Wright has it straight up the gut. As he'll get across the 40 to the 42 yard line. Takes a pick up on first down. Second and five. Linebacker's coming up and making the stop on Tanner. Michael, he was an eyelash away for running for a while. He was. He was. Southwestern put a lot of receivers out there to get some defenders out of that box. Absolutely. Let's we'll see if that. It's a trend that continues, and it looks like, for now, yes. Crabtree with backs either side of him. In a three-man front for Douglas. The handoff, Tanner Wright, straight up the gut, churning those legs across the 45 to the 46-yard line. Bottom man off the pile for Frederick Douglas will be I think Kaufman, and you mentioned Kaufman to me. Four went on the air tonight. As he is a uh, senior, not in the starting lineup when the season started, but because of an injury, got his way into the lineup and has not left the lineup for Douglas. And one of their top tacklers on the season. Mm -hmm. Third and short, third and two for the Warriors on the Randall D. Turpin CPA school board. Warriors want to convert third downs and chew clock and keep that ball away from Frederick Douglas. Gideon Brainerd trying to rumble inside right, tackle not a whole lot there as Douglas tries to rip that football away. As that will be fourth down as that hole, if there was one, closed in a hurry. As they will give Brainerd a yard, fourth and one for the Warriors from their own 46-yard line. Jumbo package looks like reporting in. I don't think Southwestern has any intention to punt this football, Josh. I wouldn't think so. As Perkins and Harmon check in. A couple tight ends for the Warriors, more blockers. On a fourth and one, nine minutes to go opening quarter. First series for the blue and orange. Douglas, first series was a punt. Crabtree hands up under center and whistles. That might change it if it's on the blue and orange. 
as we shall see. Mm, he signaled. He signaled Douglas. I'm confused. He gingerly pointed Douglas. Nope. Well, they're trying to figure it out as we speak. It does look like there we go. tried the special teams unit out. And that does change things now. There comes the official motion. As that be Coachman on Southwestern, and that changes fourth and one to a fourth and six. And on your own side, now you punt for sure. Connor Chris sends back in at own 30. He will angle it to the right and boot it away. It will drop. And take a curl as a oh, Douglas on that as a uh, Douglas player come to get it for some crazy reason coming out of the bottom of the pile with it for Southwestern after a huge miscue is Veer Patel. I don't know what the Douglas player was thinking, but you see it in the replay. That ball was almost dead from its motion from that kick, and a huge momentum swing as the Warriors have the football back first and ten. Wow. Coach McPeak has got to be livid. Wow. Unreal. Official timeout. They're going to talk about this. And Coach McPeak is hes hot on the sideline, but I don't know if he has a whole lot of things to be hot about and sides with his player. This crew will converse. And Coach Foley starting to make his way out towards the middle of the field. This could get fun early, folks. 8.35 to go, opening quarter. Coach Foley still walking out to greet the White Hat. They're going to say Douglas football. Can you explain that to me? I cannot, Josh. When the ball was punted, it did look like it hit a southwestern player. Okay, I got you. And then it, I got you. you. You know what I mean? And I think maybe that at that point the ball was dead. But did you hear whistles at that point? I did not. Okay. So the turnover did not happen. Frederick Douglass football. And up goes to Neal. Sweeping the left side. He's got the corner. Brainerd goes to get him. Where and associates head to the far sideline to wrap up stopping flags that will be holding on Frederick Douglass. Little back the Broncos up right now. The officials have more yards than either offense, close to it anyway. 8 27 to go, opening quarter. Scoreless on the Randall D. Turpin CPA scoreboard. A couple of possessions either way. I still don't understand why the Douglas player was running to get it. Uh, mental miscue is what I would chalk it up as. I, we don't have the gift of watching the replay, so. We saw it once, yeah, and can't go back to it again, sadly. Snell sweeping left, making guys miss. He'll get back to the original line of scrimmage and then go forward for about four or five more. Man, he is hard to tackle. As Jadon Washington and J.J. Hutchinson will go get him. Will Pennington in on the stop as well. Second and five. 7.50 to go. Scoreless on the Randall D. Turpin CPA scoreboard. And after you explained that, it did seem like it got close to a warrior. I think it hit a warrior in the, in the thigh here on this close side of the field. Neal again, sweeping left. He's in open space. First down yardage and more as Neal will get to the southwestern 45-yard line. England to the left. And Neal, a talented, talented senior running back for and Frederick Douglass. And I really like that tackle by Ethan Ware. He wrapped Absolutely. him up and let him take him to the ground. Like he did not let go. He didn't try to knock him over. Textbook tackle. Great job. Southwestern wants this contest to be a, a game where possessions are at a premium. 
That benefits Southwestern. Cornett out of the pistol this time. They will step up. Make that shotgun set. Cornett bobbled it quickly as he will fire complete to the 40 up to the 35. Wrapped up and then dropped there as Asher, Ware, and Ware, Ian and Ethan. Be back to make the stop. Give the reception. <laughs> Isaiah Keeney, I think. <laughs> it's the back of his jersey. Dane Key is what the announcer. Key? Key. Number 12. Yes, it is 12, not an 11. Thank you. You can see the front of his jersey as a 12. You can see the front. Yeah, that's going to get tough <laughs> as, the, as the game goes on. He's on the top side of your screen. Split wide. Neil sweeping this way now. Let's come to the near home sideline. He'll get inside the 30 to around the 29. Crisp will make the stop. Is that'll be another. Bronco first down. As Frederick Douglass moving the chains here in their second series. 6.20, to go. First quarter. Buck Wines on the Randall D. Turpin CPA school board. Cornett. To stretch those arms out to get that snap. Sneal sweeping right, looking for some running room. Big pop from Roe Pennington coming down across. Linebacker spot and lays the lumber to him, but another Frederick Douglass first down. As this drive has been heavily Darius Neal. And a really huge momentum swing there where you had a turnover, at least oh, you man. thought you did. And now Douglass is running with some success. You see Neal's jersey used up. That one's on the deck as Cornette goes down to get it. He will be wrapped up and dropped. Connor Crisp. And another Warrior getting back. Christian Kelly. That was Christian Kelly, yeah. Yes, that was a, a muff snap from the get-go. And it just dribbled back to him. And Cornette tried to make something out of it and, and couldn't. He will lose a handful, second and 15. Broncos left to right here. They're five and a half to play. Second series for the Broncos. Cornette takes the snap, looking to throw. Looking right. Now look over the middle. Fires the seed. Wide open. Touchdown. Frederick Douglas. E. J. Skill. With the score. That was a pretty ball. It was. Perfectly thrown ball right in the bread basket. Pretty. Excuse me. Crowdis. Crowdis. Two, not seven? I, I thought it was seven. I thought it was two, but did I hear Crowdis? I'm going with seven. I, the jersey appeared to be a seven. Okay. And that's what my kick is on the way. It is up and it is good. As Douglas strikes first, Citizens National Bank touchdown with 5.13 to go in the opening quarter as Cornette hooks up Link scale. Interest Counseling has made it their mission to be the trusted leader in promoting mental wellness in our communities through individualized care. Stay healthy at home with counseling and case management services using your phone or computer. Call them at 606-676-0638 to get services started today from anywhere in Kentucky. Visit their Facebook page at Entrust Healthcare Counseling for all their latest updates and giveaways. And Ford Brothers Auctioneers, a proud sports sponsor of local high school sports. Whether you are selling a family estate, private or commercial real estate, equipment or personal property, they've got you covered. Ford Brothers Auctioneers is recognized statewide and nationally as one of the leaders in the auction industry. Whether it's live, on-site, online, or a combination of both, you can count on Ford Brothers Auctioneers to deliver top quality organization advice and results for you. Visit them online at fourbrothersinc.com. Ford Brothers Auctioneers, selling the country since 1965. Cooper Reindeer will send it away as Douglas leads 7-0 early in this one. And that one drops at around the 10. Where on the return coming near sideline up to the 25. Ran out of bounds near home sideline. First and 10 for a Southwestern Ian Ware. That return 506 to go. Warriors. On the short end of it, 7-0. And the Randall D. Turpin CPA school board 
officially on that touchdown pass, Michael Gregg. Give me just a second, I tell you. Fine, sir. I'm trying to catch up with myself from earlier. 29-yard line. Warriors. 20-yard touchdown pass. We'll send trips to the right. That's the wide side of the field. One back near side. Single back set with Crabtree. High snap. Crabtree looking to throw. Fires. Wrapped up and dropped immediately as he catches the football. It's Farler with the reception. and Not a whole lot shaking on that one. As you can really see the speed. Uh, Frederick Douglas there. Yeah, that, that had tr trouble written on it, Josh. It certainly did. Davis Joyner with the stop. Second and 14. Pass play of negative four. It's the Warriors behind the chains. Three men front for Douglas. Tanner Wright straight up the gut. Gets to the line and has it shut down. as. He wrapped up and dropped Johnson, Caden Johnson. Right. It's a gain of two, but that's going to set up a third and 12 here for Southwestern. They are really behind the chains with 4.15 to go opening quarter. Let's swap out a dry football. Third and long. Actually a passing situation here. Second series of the night for the Blue and Orange. The first was a punt. Almost had a big Frederick Douglass turnover. Crabtree looking to throw. Good protection. It'll break down. Fires over the middle. That'll be complete at the first down marker. Making a man miss. Getting up to the 43-yard line. Nice pitch and catch. Crabtree to uh, Hibbard. Move the chains. A Turner Realty Group first down for the Warriors. And that is a big shot in the arm with 3.51 to go opening quarter. And that's an aspect of this football team that we don't see a lot because it's not needed. Tonight, that passing game may be needed. Absolutely. And, and Hibbard, and they've got some capable receivers out there, Hibbard um, amongst that group. First and ten for Southwestern from their own 42. Warriors looking to put a extended drive together. Crabtree out of the gun. Harler comes in motion. Near home sideline. Handoff. Brainerd. Spin move away from a guy. Spin again. And Douglas there to wrap him up and drive him backwards. Hats to the football for Frederick Douglas. Three guys to the football. First man there. Big number 99. Yeah. Big time stop. Brainerd somehow, some way, got two. <laughs> Dylan Asher checking in on the offensive side of the football. I do not see a lineman that came out, so maybe he's checking in at tight end. Three minutes to go opening quarter. No, he's at right, right guard. Crabtree hands up under center. Power back, bone set as the sweep. Connor Chris near sideline. Makes a man miss at the 50. Still rumbling up to around the 41-yard line. Another first down for the Blue and Orange as the Warriors started a roll now. Chris with a nice pitch. Making a guy miss. Whoop, threw a guy. First down. Fif 15 yards on that carry from Chris. And if I'm not mistaken, Josh, that was Chris average last week was 15 yards a carry. That's what Chris does. <laughs> he I does. Mean, he's, a, he's a game changer. He's a, a change of pace back. Uh, and he can move. He's one of three backs that were over 100 yards last Friday night. Warriors going to need that tonight. Good drive here for Southwestern. Their second of the night. Looking for points as they trail 7-0 on the Randall D. Turpin CPA scoreboard. And off to Crisp again. Makes a guy miss in the backfield. Just rolls his way up to around the 30-yard line. There you Gets go. a little extra help, a little extra shove afterwards, and another shove afterwards. Careful about that now. Yep. You let that get out of hand. As Connor Crisp, a one-man wrecking crew. Another Turner Realty Group. First down. Warriors get a big third down pitch and catch. Crabtree to Hibbert. Couple of nice first down runs by Crisp. Warriors have a nice drive going. 
most importantly, I think, building confidence. Absolutely. Proving that they can move the football against Frederick Douglass. Right bone set. Crabtree dropped the, dropped the pigskin. He'll live to find another down as he'll just fall on it. I expected some of that to happen tonight with all the rain that we had overnight throughout the day. Second and ten, really. No loss there. Just hate to lose the down. 96 seconds to go. Opening frame. 7-0. Frederick Douglass. Buffalo Wings and Rings video game of the week. As it will be Brainerd, Walden, and Wright in the backfield behind Crabtree. And off. Christian Walden. Inside left tackle. Scores loose to the 20. To the 10. Touchdown. Southwestern. 1 11 to go. A 29 yard touchdown. By how about that youngster? Christian Walden. <laughs> That's just fantastic right there. Big time tote. Yeah. Gets through the defense, behind the defense, onto the house for six. On the hardwood, Josh, you usually hear a crowd start saying, he's a freshman. <laughs> Don't you? Young you do. freshman getting the quality minutes and just performing. So kudos to Christian Walden, like big time play right there. Absolutely. 7-6. And kudos to the offensive line. Continue an impressive work. And, folks, these Southwestern players, many of them playing two ways. Douglas, fortunate they don't really have to do that. You're going to notice that as the game goes on. As two-point conversion. Brainerd looking for it, searching for the end zone. Did he get in? No, oh, they say no. Just denied. It's the two-point conversion. No good. 7-6 as the rain Really gets heavy. Here at the reservation, Warriors answer their second series of the nine to touchdown. The point conversion fell 7 6 on the Randall D. Turpin CPA scoreboard. If you want a great career, Somerset Community College's career and technical programs can help. Or if you want a bachelor's degree but not massive college debt, just start at SEC and transfer to the new University Center of Southern Kentucky located right here in Somerset and save thousands. Sign up now on campus or visit us online at somerset.kctcs.edu. Don't delay. Enroll today. And Somerset Community College is our sponsor of our offensive player of the game that we'll be awarding at the conclusion of tonight's game. And Modern Systems will be awarding our defender of the game. And since 1979, Modern Systems has been defending communities all across Kentucky, and they are proud to be part of the communities they serve. Committing time and sponsorships to numerous charities like Project 5810, Relay for Life, March of Dimes, Heart Walk, local school programs, and many more. Modern yeah. Systems, your neighbors and your friends, and they work 24-7 to protect the things that matter most to you, from homes to businesses to schools and churches. Let Modern Systems be your trusted name in security. Now, Yola, we'll send it away. And a heavy downpour. That's a live football caught by one of the up men for That's Frederick Broncos. Douglass. As that will be Jason Benford. Got his paw on it. And will fall on it. First and ten for Frederick Douglass. You can't see it through our cameras, but folks taking action as rain shower moving through. It could be worse. <laughs> it could be. First and ten for Frederick Douglass. As they find themselves leading 7-6 on the Randall D. Turpin CPA school board. Third series of the night for Douglas. So it starts at their own 40. Balls on the deck again. As that will be recovered by uh, Darius Neal. Second and 14 as an exchange. Has not been there a couple of times for Douglas as we go under a minute in the opening frame. Adverse conditions tonight at the reservation, to say the least. Yeah, the forecast, you kind of saw this coming earlier in the week. Yep. Actually, last week we thought it might be sleet or freezing rain or snow. As Cornette looking to throw, fires over the middle. That'll be complete, wrapped up and dropped. And he'll slide up to the 45 as... Right, we'll uh, get the tackle. He will slide up to the 45. They'll spot him at the 48-yard line. So now Crowdis. is that a two or a seven? That is Crowdis. That That's is two. two. Okay. But to my 41-year-old eyes, that looks like a seven. 
I'll be honest with you, I wouldn't swear to it either way. But that's a two. Yeah, I'll give you that. <laughs> Blitz coming You're up right. the gut. Cordette puts it on the deck. He'll slip. Sweeping left. He lowers his head, and he'll get the boom laid on him as Roe Pennington coming to get Cornette. As again, an exchange as it is really coming down now at the reservation. Wind gusting as well. That will put us at the end of one as Warriors lead 7 6 on the Randall D. Turpin CPA scoreboard. My goodness. Adverse conditions is an understatement. Henderson Chiropractic is committed to relieving your pain using the true principles of chiropractic care. Their caring, helpful team strives for excellence through extraordinary service and patient education. Dr. Henderson provides chiropractic care for injuries that occur during sports, auto accidents, work-related activities, or just everyday wear and tear. The experience you need for the results you want, that's Henderson Chiropractic. And Skip Cottrell's Tire Pros offers a straightforward approach to tire and auto service that includes nationwide warranties and a hassle-free experience. Did you know Skip Cottrell's makes automotive services easy with their online appointment booking as well as special financing available? Let Skip Cottrell's Tire Pros get you back to when being on the move was carefree. Skip Cottrell's Tire Pros, hassle-free, guaranteed. To find out more, visit us in-store at 4285 South Highway 27 in Somerset or online at skipstirepros.com. You want to know how windy it is all of a sudden? Did we our, almost lost your mind. Well, the, <laughs> we had some action outside the box. We did. Was that our tent? It <laughs> just about took off on us. It is windy. It is rainy. It is not pleasant at the reservation. It's a tight one, though. 7-6, Frederick Douglass with that one-point lead as Douglass has the football now, football now right to left for the Broncos from the southwestern 47. Cornette looking to throw. Fires. That will be complete. Up at around the uh, 44 yard line. As Ethan Ware will get the stop, give the uh, reception to uh, Dane Key. That'll set up third and long for the Broncos. In my car, maybe I can go get it half time. Third and about six as the wind is gusting and rain is peppering the reservation. Cornette takes the snap, hands it off to Neal, looking to sweep right. Warrior missed him in the backfield, a couple more missing. Brainerd and Associates will come to get him, and he will be denied the corner, setting up a fourth down for Frederick Douglass. Southwestern's defense digging in. And right now you got to dig in, not get blown away by Mother Nature. You can, you can see our camera flutter about just a bit. It is windy. As the bell tolls on fourth down. I heard that. Was that, was that by design? I believe so. I like that. As Douglas will look to pin Southwestern deep. Trying to get it on fourth and long. Got to watch the snap. That's high. Kicker went up to get it. And he will chip shot it. It's just inside the 30. First and ten. Keeney will boot that one away. Get about a, would you say about a 40% kick on that one? He just not laying the hammer on it. I think he did on, I mean, he did it intentionally. Oh, absolutely. He angled it, kicked it out of bounds. Absolutely. But it was only about 11, 12-yard net on that. So, if you're Southwestern, you got to be pleased oh, with absolutely. that. Oh, hey. absolutely. You could have been pinned inside your tent. Yeah, Southwestern didn't even have a deep man back, no. if you noticed. It was, they didn't trust that one. And I don't blame them. This is a team that onsides kicked, you know, in that first quarter. That's right. That first of that game last year. Yeah, you and I talking about that. That really got Southwestern behind the eight ball, and it was, it was a, a, a monumental effort. It would have been from that point. As Southwestern keeps that one on the ground. As that ball popped loose, so I think that was right and had the tote. On the play. That's right. We'll get a couple as they will peel Tanner off the deck. Second and about seven. He actually got more than one, I thought. Ten minutes to go. Warriors with a chance to take their first lead of the night. Douglas just finishing up their third series. Starting in the first quarter into the second. Punt, touchdown punt. For Douglas, Southwestern punt, TD, their third series. That's what you're seeing right now, 9.44 to go. 
Power back bone set as Crabtree hands it off to uh, Brainerd. As short yardage, not a whole lot there. Third and long. It's Douglas getting plenty of hats to the football to give Johnson with the stop, but you could you could have picked any one of four Broncos. Yeah, and you can see early in this game, Douglas read the scouting report, and they have keyed in on Gideon Brainerd. Absolutely. Third and long, approaching nine minutes to go. Second quarter, 7-6 on the Randall D. Turpin CPA scoreboard. Crabtree will bring them to the line. The box is full of Broncos. Makes the handoff to Brainerd. He'll hand it off to Wright. And he will try to dig in, and cleats will fail him. He will fall, slide down, fourth and long. It's not a whole lot of footing in that section of the field here at the reservation. Comes the punting unit for Southwestern. With 8.29 to go in the second quarter. Douglas will send a man back. Chris will lay the toe to it. Chris Walden splitting to the top side wide. He's got the touchdown for the blue and orange. The freshman getting the Warriors on the board. One point game. Reason title on the line. Three seconds to go on the play clock. As the Warriors will get it away. Beautiful punt by Connor. Takes a friendly hop. And that will be returnable. Walden downfield almost got him down and got him off kilter just enough as he turned it upfield. As turn man will lose his footing. Now this on the return. First and 10 Broncos. 7.55 to go, second quarter. 7 6 on the Randall D. Turpin CPA scoreboard. Who'd you have on the return? Crowdis, I think. The two and the seven look yeah, we're, very much similar. Okay. And I, I apologize for those watching. Yeah, we may. I may credit one man's stats to somebody else. It, it is what it is. I'll have the, Sometimes have the, the seven right. are just straight down, and it's yeah. like no, no, no yeah. extra wide on the bottom. And these are, and yeah, a lot of things going on. Cornette out of the gun. He will hand it off to there the running go. back. And not a whole lot there. As the Warrior front had that one snuffed out. Neil will uh, lose a yard or more. Asher and others to the football. You see Cody Harmon's uniform completely used up. They sure are pretty. Sure are muddy. Either way, they're pretty either way. They are. <laughs> Warriors still playing football. They'll clean up good. The region championship in December. Second and 11. Cornette looking to throw. Going to fire one downfield. Pretty ball. And that will be in and out of the hands of the receiver. Official fell as well. J.J. Hutchinson applying the defense. Well played, J.J. They both pick up a tackle on the official. Though. Yes, they did. <laughs> <laughs> that was a tough fall. I'm glad to see the official's yeah, okay. Yeah, absolutely. We chuckle about that. Yeah, it's yeah. not funny. Yeah. It's easy to laugh in the box. He is okay. And that just shows – the footing is, is scarce at the reservation tonight. Cornette throws a pretty ball. He does. As his receiver climbing the ladder to try to get it. Couldn't reel it in. I think it's Christian Kelly running off the field. Yep. Third and 11. Four man front for the Warriors. Whistles will stop it. Flag on the play. We'll stop the clock with 7.10 to go, second quarter. 7-6 score. Douglas with the lead. On the home, boys. Timeout, South As the Warriors will burn a timeout with 7.10 to go in the uh, second quarter. A uh, UCBTO, that's a United Cumberland Bank timeout. Banking is easier at United Cumberland Bank. ATM deposits, instant issue debit cards, and a mobile app that give you full control. Just a few reasons why more Pulaski Countyans are choosing United Cumberland Bank, member FDIC. 
And keeping stats and a correct score is important to players, coaches, and fans. And the same can be said about keeping your taxes and finances in order. For over 26 years, Randall D. Turpin CPA has been doing just that. If accounting is not your thing, then, do, then let the pros at Randall D. Turpin CPA do it for you. Proud sponsor, the Randall D. Turpin Scoreboard, located on Parker's Mill Road in Somerset. And in real estate, working with the right people matters. Barry Turner, broker and co-owner at Turner Realty Groups, knows the ropes. Over the years, Turner Realty Group has developed excellent relationships with their clients. See for yourself on their Zillow profile with more reviews than anyone else in the Lake Cumberland region. Third and 11 for Douglas. 7-10 to play. Second quarter, Lynette looking to throw. Lance fires, far sideline, and that was too long for his intended target. It's Connor Chris applying the pressure. I mean, Neal swinging out of the backfield. That'll be a fourth down. Here comes the punting unit again for uh, Douglas. Third punt in four series. The Warriors giving themselves a puncher's chance. I'll give you some offensive numbers here in a second. Cannot wait, my friend. As Douglas will send it away and back to receive for Southwest, and that will skip to the punter. And he will boot that one away. As Hibbard will get away from it, and that will die at the 44. I can't see a jersey number on the, pr on the punter. On. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not going to get any easier as we go along. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to give it to the last guy. We'll do the best we can. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I believe that was Kenny. 6.56. I think I would not swear to it. So, total offensive numbers for the night so far, Josh. Frederick Douglass, 92 yards. Southwestern, 85 yards. Wow. So, we're tight. Very tight. Where it matters the most on the Randall D. Turpin CPA School Board. 7-6, fourth series of the night for Southwestern. Chance to take the lead against Douglas. High snap. Handoff goes to Brainer. Nothing there straight up the gut. Tries to come to the near side. Will be uh, slung down. By Douglas, defensive lineman. Here we go on the stop. I'll try to say it right. And this is that spot of the field that we feel like it's probably have has the loosest footing of the whole field. And you can really see it. Yeah, you can see you, it. You, you can just faintly make out the 45-yard line across the field. Again, a lot of rain overnight throughout the day. and Still raining now, but not as heavily as it was about 10 minutes ago. Wildcat set. Ten to right. Direct snap. Angles off left tackle. Lost the football. It'll squirt loose up to uh, across midfield. And Douglas will be on top of it. And so that was a good tote by Wright. And lost it. Somebody punched it out on his way. And Douglas will pick up the turnover. You see who got the football? I did not. I'm sorry. That's all right. It squirted a good five, six, seven yards in front of right. And it was an easy pickup. Douglas knew they were going to get it, and that guy got to the sideline in a hurry to get his offense back on the field. 6.13 to go. Second quarter, big spot in this one. First turnover. Either way, did not. We're just hoping that one doesn't cost him. Cornette out of the gun. Hands it off to Neal. Off right tackle makes a couple guys miss. Real Pennington will come up and make the stop. Neal about seven, eight yards deep. Neal will get a couple more. and He'll be right at the first down marker. And after that contact from Pennington, that'll move the chains first and ten for the Broncos. 6.05 to go second quarter. As Frederick Douglass looking to make the most of the Southwestern turnover. Warrior D looking to dig in. Again, Neil straight up the gut. Huge hole this time as he'll get close to another 10 on that tote. As Asher will get the stop. Pennington there as well. You can see the face mask just full of mud for Roe Pennington. Cody Harmon's uniform already used up. 
Second and short. Rain still falls at the reservation. Cornet claps those hands. Hands it off to Neal. Off right tackle. Tough yardage, but he will get the first down. Right side. The flag will fly late. As the home folks excited about that one. Another flag will fly late. As, wow. We get unchained here in a minute. As the officials will sort this one out. This one has been heated a couple times in this opening half. Take him a minute to work it out, Josh. It is going to. 5 12 to go, second quarter. 7 6 on the Randall D. Turpin CPA scoreboard. As you see, the officials conversing. As Douglas scored on their second series of the night. Southwestern, likewise. Still discussing this. They have their cell phones out. They may be running out of minutes about that <laughs> at this point. <laughs> and here it comes from the white hat. As that will be personal foul on Frederick Douglass. Here it comes. Wait for it. Oh. Ooh, both of them on Frederick Douglass. As that will back the Broncos up for a huge pop for the home folks. Yes, that will change the drive big time for Frederick Douglass. Douglass? A mm, couple times tonight. They've lost their, their wits. And, and that takes them wow. from a uh, second and short okay. at the Southwestern 36, 37 yard line. Back deeper in their own territory. Yeah, second and 35 is what I've got, Josh. Massive. But this is an opportunity Southwestern has to capitalize on. Yep. Like, you can't let them convert these. Yep. You're absolutely right. Second and 35. You just coughed up the football on the turnover. You can limit the damage and get it back and forget about it. Officials still discussing. Waiting to return to action here. Seven six one point Frederick Douglass lead. Warriors going for the two point conversion. Brainerd's run just missed. So so, so far, dirtiest uniform of the night award. I've got to give that to Christian Kelly. Uh, he is covered from head to toe as he rushes back on the field. Well, or maybe not. Well, yep. on Washington to give him a pretty good run too. You oh, see I Christian see you, Kelly. Kelly, <laughs> <laughs> that's used up. <laughs> That's a hard-working man right there. Uh, as more whistles, we may never get back to action. And as the home folks are becoming antsy, and I can see why. It should not take this long. Not sure what the issue is now. Mm -mm -mm. Long pause here, sorting out the penalty and now, I don't know what we're doing now. The White Hat will come to the near sideline. Well, line. I will say this, Josh. They have moved the down marker. They've got it set up first and ten. And I don't – so they converted the first down, and they just moved them backward? It would appear so. Okay, so I need to adjust. The down marker has – but how mm, – Yeah, I don't how know. How is that possible? I don't know. Randall D. Turpin, CPA school board, says second and 35. Down markers have it first and 10. Cornette takes the snap. He will hand it off to Neal. Straight up the gut, wrapped up and dropped to Skinny and Brainerd. Went to get him. Skid will give you a, a good run. Third is uniform. That'll be second down and five. I just don't understand it. And now I'm going to leave it. I just don't understand how it could be first and 10 there after those penalties. Yeah. I will say I'm not a smart man. Second and about five. And four and a half to play second quarter. Cornette straight back to throw. Looking. Still looking. 
Nothing there. Flushed out of the pocket. He will slide down and give that quarterback sack to Jadon Washington. As Cornette looking, looking, looking. Excuse me, Mink. Maddox Mink. My apologies. And that was a coverage sack. Yes, it absolutely was. QB looking for an open receiver, just couldn't find one. And Jadon Washington in the neighborhood there, and Cornette just lost his footing. But we'll take it. Absolutely. Third and long. Thank you, Paul Wright. Penalties were a dead ball after the play. I'm glad okay. somebody's paying attention. Uh, that one had me confused. Thank you, Paul. Appreciate it, sir. Cornette looking to throw third and long. Fires near sideline again. That was too long for his intended target. Near home sideline. Cornette been too amped all night. And you see his receiver, Cameron Dunn, near home sideline. A little frustrated with his quarterback. Yeah, you mentioned Cornette being amped up. I, I thought the same thing on the night right now. Cornette four out of nine mm. for 48 yards. So Southwestern actually benefiting from the fact that Cornette just not on his game tonight. He is not. At least early. That is true. A lot of football left. 3.32 to go, second quarter. 7 6. This one is still tight. And he's still reigning reservation. Low snap this time to the punter. And we'll boot it away on an angle. That will take a friendly skip. And we'll die it around the Southwestern 43 yard line. 3.21 to go, second quarter. Fifth series of the night for the Blue and Orange. Warriors 10 and 1. Their fifth 10 win season. Victory over Pulaski County last Friday night. Frederick Douglass 6 and 1. They defeated Scott County last Friday night 39 21. Big win for Douglas. They are solid year in and year out. First and 10 Blue and Orange. Left to right here for the Warriors. Asher back out there on the offensive line. Still not been able to determine who we we're missing out there. Crabtree brings them to the line. Now we're back. Bone set. Box is full. The handoff crisp off left tackle. Yard maybe two. Or he's driven backwards. And hats to the football for Douglas. Joiner makes the stop. As they get hats on top of hats to the football. They are active on defense. Second and two. Under three minutes to go. Warriors at their own 45. They trail by Penny on the Randall D. Turpin CPA scoreboard. Brainerd with the handoff. Starts up the gut. Nothing there. He'll bounce it off right tackle for positive yardage. Driven backwards. Game third. And third. A little bit longer on what Southwestern would want here. Third and Brainerd didn't get a whole lot. Third third and seven. Gave him one. Approaching two minutes to go. Second quarter. Thanks for joining us for the Buffalo Wings and Rings video game of the week. Third and seven for Southwestern. They split two receivers either side. Crabtree rolls near sideline, looking to throw. Fires underneath, coming back to the football. And they underthrown up around the Douglas 40 as Hibbert trying to uh, make the grab. Incomplete, fourth down, punting unit for the Blue and Orange. It looked like Crisp was really wide open right there in the center of the football field. Just a missed opportunity right there. You see it. Through our camera. As this is tough section of the of the field to try to get footing in. Fourth and seven, a minute fifty to go. Clock stop with an incomplete pass. As Chris will send it away. Runs near sideline and sends it away. That takes a friendly southwestern hop, a very friendly southwestern hop, and that will die. Inside the 10, first and 10 for uh, Frederick Douglass. Minute 40 to go. Opening half. 
Douglas leads 7 6 on the Randall D. Turpin CPA scoreboard. A chest match, if you will. And with a minute 40 on the clock, Josh, can Southwestern keep all those pieces on the board and keep the Broncos out of the end zone here? That would not be a kind of momentum swing for the Warriors. No, it would not. As ready for play whistle blows. Douglas still huddled around Coach Peak, breaking that huddle. Warriors are ready to go defensively. We'll have to hurry. Ten seconds to go on the play clock. As they are just now settling over the football. Five seconds to go. Two seconds. One. And play clock's at zero. And they had no idea the play clock was that close to zero. I'm going to back them up. And it makes the first. And 15 from the two as the home folks get rowdy. As Douglas pinned in the shadows of their own goal post. Cornette out of the gun. Takes the snap. Under pressure. Fires downfield. One-on-one coverage. Overshot his man. That's pretty well defended by uh, Ware. Ethan Ware applying the pressure. His intended target was key. 94 seconds to go. That one not as overthrown as previous no, balls. It was, that was really close, Josh. Very good defensive play by Mr. Ware. Second and long. Region championship on the line. Rematch of last year's region title game. That one in Lexington. Neil gets his number called. Straight up the gut. Dancing around. Makes a couple guys miss. He's in some space. Up at around the 20. Still rumbling to the 25. Giving him to the 27-yard line. That's a nice tote by Neil as he comes out pumped. Big time run. Darius Neal moved the chains for Frederick Douglass. Clock stops with a minute 23 to go in the second quarter. It will fire again with the ready-for-play whistle and when the change gets set. He is a very nice running back. Yeah, that was a big run by Neal. Hard to tackle. Absolutely he is. He is. Momentary pause. We're... Coming off near sideline. First and ten for the Broncos. Minute 20 to go. Clock winds. First and ten. Frederick Douglass from their own 26-yard line. And then out of the gun. Back to throw. Under pressure. Fires a good ball downfield. And that'll be caught at the Southwestern 44-yard line as pitch and catch. As Key gets that reception, big time swing as Frederick Douglass invades Southwestern territory with 64 seconds to go. Warrior defense trying to dig in deep to not give one up late. As Douglass will take a United Cumberland Bank timeout with 64 seconds to play in the opening half. Brad Carroll and all the staff at CC's Furniture are proud supporters of all local football teams in our Lake Cumberland area. It is our hope here at CC's Furniture that all the coaches and all the student athletes have a successful and an injury-free season. Come visit us at CC's Furniture, where we will be glad to help you with all your home furnishing needs. Go teams. Are you in the market for a new home? You can start the mortgage process from the comfort of your couch. The Citizens National Bank Quick Mortgage is our convenient online mortgage application, allowing you to shop loan products, check rates, and get pre-qualified. It only takes 20 minutes to fill out your CNB Quick Mortgage application on our quick mobile-friendly website. Visit cnbsomerset.com to get started on your CNB Quick Mortgage today, subject to credit approval. Citizens National Bank, moving forward together, member FDIC, equal housing lender. First and 10, Douglas. On their own timeout, from the Southwestern 44. Looking to throw. Fires far sideline, making the adjustment. A flag will fly. Yes, that will be incomplete, but let's see what that flag will be. 
Looks like there's two on the field. Crowd, Unless, is, yep. on the crowd is the intended target. And a ride applying the pressure. Comes the call. Well, that'll be holding on Douglas and then pass interference on, on Southwestern. <laughs> Fifty six point five seconds to go. Your favorite kind of penalty, Josh. Offsetting. We accomplished nothing. But penalty is penalty. This crew's done a good job. They have. First and ten again. For Douglas to those offsetting penalties. As Douglas looking to go to the air. We'll spin it downfield, and that'll be picked off by Southwestern at the 25-yard line. Mason Hibbert, he's always inbounds. That's right. And he was in the middle of the field. Inbounds, Mason Hibbert. That was a perfectly thrown ball to Mason. There wasn't a Bronco within seven yards of that one. That's miscommunication on the route. And the pass from Cornette. Cornett has not been on his game tonight. Warriors with a chance. First turnover of the half for Douglas. Comes late with 51 seconds to play. Warriors with a chance to score late. That has been easier said than done. Crabtree lines up quarterback. Now splits wide. Near home sideline, Connor Crisp takes the snap, a high snap. He had to use all of that body to get it. He'll come to the near sideline, turns the corner, cuts it upfield. He'll get to the 35-yard line. Right at the first down marker, move the chains. It is a Turner Realty Group first down with 43.9 seconds to go. Connor Crisp had had, has had a nice night toting the football for Coach Jason Foley. He has. I'll tell you how well here. He's had a good season. He has. Five rushes, 42 yards, 8.4 yard average. Clock winding. Warriors got to go. 35 seconds to go. Tanner Wright straight up. They got pinballs off a guy. Yes. Had a nice pickup. Give him seven. Second and three. Clock winding with 23 seconds to go. Clock still rolling. 15 seconds to go. Warriors huddling. They break the huddle and come to the line. 10 seconds to play. Crabtree takes the snap, hands it off to Brainerd inside left tackle, and he'll get a couple. That'll set up third down and short, third and one, and that'll do it. 7-6 hmm. at intermission as Frederick Douglass leads Southwestern for the region championship. Well, uh, some of our sponsors. Come back. Half time numbers and more. The people of this great land are resilient and will get through this. And buying and selling is the real stimulus. Land and real estate are the premium investments, and they're not just making any more land. At Ford Brothers Auctioneers, we'll get you the most for your property with live, online, and multi-parcel auctions. Selling farms, homes, developments, and commercial properties for top dollar. Give us a call or online at FordBrothersInc.com. Since 1988, Toyota of Somerset has been serving and supporting our local communities. We want you to know that we are here for you and your family. Someone you can trust. Someone you can count on. Now and for the better days to come. Trusted. Loyal. Dedicated. Helpful and consistent. Toyota of Somerset. Come see us or visit us online at toyotaofsomerset.com. 
Don't feel great? Just can't wait? Quick Care's open late. Just walk in for accidents and illnesses or for health services like physicals and flu shots. Quick Care Walk-In Clinic at Med Park West for over a decade on Hale Knob Road, just behind the hospital. <laughs> Quick Care Walking Clinic High School Football presented by the Don Franklin Family of Dealerships on Lake Cumberland Sports. It's Buffalo Wings and Rings video. Game of the week at intermission. Frederick Douglass leads Southwestern 7-6 on the Randall D. Turpin CPA School Board. As each team with uh, six possessions in the uh, opening half. Douglas, they, uh, they struck first with 5-13 to go. In the uh, opening quarter, a 20-yard touchdown pass. Cornette to uh, Scale makes it 6 to nothing. Extra point good, 7 nothing. Douglas with the lead. Southwestern answering with a minute 11 to go. In the uh, opening quarter, a uh, 29-yard touchdown pass by Christian Walden. That made it 7-6. to six. The Warriors selecting to go for the uh, two-point diversion as that was a uh, run by Brainerd. Just missed it. As 7-6 at the end of one. Nobody able to uh, dent the uh, Randall D. Turpin CPA scoreboard in the second. And that's where we are at the half. 7-6 as Douglas leads Southwestern with the uh, region championship here at a uh, rainy reservation. As Southwestern and Douglas again both six sessions in the opening half. Douglas first series was a punt. Scored their lone touchdown on their uh, second series. And then punt, 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 INT possessions for Frederick Douglass. In the uh, opening half for Southwestern, they will get the ball to uh, start the third, if memory serves correct, as uh, Southwestern started with a punt. And they scored their lone touchdown on their second series of the night. Third series with a punt. Lone turnover for Southwestern in the uh, opening half, coming their fourth series. Douglas' lone turnover in their last series in Southwestern finishing up with the punt and then uh, the possession as the clock expired at the half. 7-6 on the Randall D. Turpin CPA scoreboard as Frederick Douglas leads uh, Southwestern. The Warriors 10-1 and coming into the evening. Their fifth 10-win season in uh, program history as they picked up that 10th win after a victory over Pulaski County last Friday night. Warriors on a four-game winning streak since their uh, lone loss of the season that to PC. Their fifth straight region title game. Their sixth in the last seven years. Southwestern's lone region championship goes back to uh, 2011. Again, just the second ever meeting between the Blue and Orange and Frederick Douglass. Southwestern's first region home game since 2017. Frederick Douglass, 6-1 and one coming into the evening as they defeated Scott County. Last Friday night, they're on a six-game winning streak since uh, their season opening loss. Second straight region championship for uh, Frederick Douglass. Their third in the last four years. They won last year versus Southwestern in Lexington, 44-8. to Frederick Douglass 1-0 versus Southwestern. And they lead in a tight one at the half, 7-6. to Michael, Southwestern had chances. And they're giving themselves a puncher's chance in the second half. They are. And I think if you're Coach Foley, I mean, you wanted that. You had a lot of things that happened in that first half that was positive. Um, yeah, Josh. I'm trying to catch my breath. I had to run You go downstairs. right ahead. You go right ahead. I was going to give you a chance to catch your breath. And while you do that, I will uh, reset the uh, Class 5A gridiron bowl here in uh, Class 5A. And uh, unfortunately – as uh, a couple teams had to forfeit due to uh, COVID-19. And your heart just breaks for uh, Fairdale, who was 7-0 and going into the regional championship round. And also uh, our friends up the road at Madison Southern. Uh, Southern 6-3, and both of those teams having to forfeit. So Owensboro advancing to the next round. Covington Catholic advancing to the uh, next round as uh, well. Bowling Green at 7-2, and battling a 8-2 and North Bullet team, of course, here tonight, Southwestern versus Frederick Douglass. Okay, Josh, so total offensive numbers uh, for the two teams tonight. Frederick Douglass has 143 yards on the night. Southwestern had a 119, uh, which is 
that's close. You know, passing yards, obviously we expected Douglas to win that battle. So, uh, Douglas, 79 yards to Southwestern's 11. Rushing the football, Frederick Douglas has got 64 yards. Southwestern, 108. So, Southwestern winning that battle. Yeah. Um, turnovers, one each way. An interception thrown by Douglas. Fumble by Southwestern. Um, Connor Crisp, five attempts, 42 yards, 8.4 yard average, which is fantastic considering the field conditions. Mm -hmm. Tanner Wright, seven attempts, 32 yards, 4.6 average. Christian Walden, that one attempt for 30 yards for the touchdown. Gideon Brainerd, five attempts for five yards. And that really, Josh, has been key because Gideon Brainerd hasn't been bottled up like that all year. Again, it seemed like Southwestern lived all night at about the 40-yard line, and that was the probably the worst spot field condition-wise, and they had a lot of trouble with the footing. Uh, receiving the football for Frederick Douglass, Dane Key had three receptions for 43 yards, averaging 14.3 per. I have EJ Klinkscale with one reception for 20 <laughs> and a touchdown. That could have been Crotus. Now, we've had a lot of trouble with the seven and the two, so I'm just going to apologize there. Uh, Deacle Crotus has, for sure, one reception for 16 yards. Receiving the football for Southwestern, Mason Hibbert has one for 15. And Alex Farler has a catch that netted negative four. Um, and defensively, you know, Mason Hibbert has the big interception right here before the halftime. And, and, and Josh, you mentioned it, a puncher's chance. You've got that. Um, Southwestern is going to receive the football. You know, I, I think if you uh, – Ask Coach Foley if he'll be pleased going into the half down by a penny, as you put it earlier. I think he would be, you know, because you want to be on top of this football game, but you want a chance to compete. Absolutely. His team has competed. His team has wanted it. You can see that. Um, the quarterback for Douglas has been off for whatever reason, uh, maybe wet football. I hope that continues for – uh, Southwestern, they've been able to put a little bit of pressure on the quarterback, but it's really not been about the pressure on the QB. It's been about the QB. has been off target. Yeah. Uh, Neal has been effective, but they've kept him out of the end zone. So we'll see if, you know, if, they, if Southwestern can continue to do what they've done in the first half and just catch a couple breaks. You know, maybe how about getting the football in a different part of the football field? Because they, they lived right here in front of the box, and this might be the worst part of the field all night. Uh, Condition-wise, so we'll see how the second half goes. They're right there in it. Um, they're they're running the football with some success, which yep. is what they do. So we'll see how this second half plays out. And Southwestern, it's again, they didn't throw it a whole heck of a lot in the in the first half, but when they did throw it, they were fairly successful, and that that too will help the running game in the second half and get some of those active Broncos who are just athletic as they come. Get them out of that box and, and get them spread out. And I think that's what Coach Foley was doing early in the game to, to get those three wide receivers split wide and, and one that the other way to, to get those guys out of there and give those backs some uh, room. And then he went to that power bone, that that wishbone set, and just tried to try to outnumber you that Southwestern does so well. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they had a lot of success to win a football and going to have to do that again in the second half. And something you mentioned in the pregame show, the, the secondary, uh, again, yes, you know, Cornette has been off on, on multiple passes, multiple passes tonight. But in, in most of all of those passes, a, uh, a a Douglas offensive player has had a Warrior defender cloaked all over. You bet. I mean, both Wire boys have played a, a phenomenal first half they football have. defensively. Um, <clears throat> J.J. Hutchinson's played good defensively. Of course, Mason Hibbard, uh, he's all over the field defensively, had the nice uh, interception there. So, you're right. The defensive secondary has answered the call in this matchup, particularly during this first half. Uh, and they are certainly going to factor into the outcome of this one. Absolutely. Which is far from have being decided. Oh, absolutely. A, uh, a lot of football left in uh, Southwestern. And Frederick Douglass for the uh, region championship, 7-6. to six. One more little housekeeping piece for uh, me. I forget to uh, mention you know, Renvere had the, uh, the point after for uh, Douglas as they scored their lone touchdown with 5.13 to go in the opening quarter. And you knew as the week went along, you kept seeing the forecast of rain. You knew coming into tonight, possessions were going to be at a premium. 
taking care of the football, and we've seen that. That's something we hadn't talked a whole lot about either. As uh, several times tonight, footballs have been laid on the deck, and, and several of those have been, you know, Aaron snaps. So, and they've they've been. I've saw a few high snaps, Josh, for the most part on southwestern side. They've handled that. I mean, I I saw one play down here where, and Chandler has a, a chance. He has a habit of doing this where he'll catch that ball with one hand. Uh, and every time he does that, my heart skips a beat because per- <laughs> particularly on a night like tonight when the ball is wet, um, that ball gets behind you. That's going to spell trouble uh, for Southwestern, particularly, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, the One glaring difference, I know you at home are watching this football game, one glaring difference, uh, and the reason the Douglas uniforms aren't quite as dirty as the Southwestern uniforms, not many of those players play both ways, if any kids do. Uh, Southwestern has a ton of kids that play both sides of the football. That's just another testament, too, of how well they've played in this first half. Um, again, I mean, you got to lock their chances, Josh. They've come out here. Um, the Douglas team, if they doubted in the first half, they believe now that this Southwestern Warrior team is for real. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, uh, for what it is in, in Douglas – being able to have, uh, you know, basically an offense and a defense. You, you credit Coach Jason Foley and the job that he has done here at Southwestern because in, in prior regimes it was, okay, let me have my my starters and, and then give me one, maybe two more, and I'm going to ride those guys. But and, you know, as we've seen and we've documented, we did earlier in the broadcast, a guy like Christian Walden puts yes. in the time, puts in the work, shows Coach Foley that he's trustworthy and that he can, and he can play the game at the varsity level freshman or not, you're going to get playing time. Yeah. And, and that's helped Southwestern's depth as well, and that was one of the many things a region championship was included in that that Coach Foley wanted to accomplish here at Southwestern. You bet. And I think it's also worth noting that in, in a day in a game where we've talked a lot about the sloppy field, uh, the running back that's had the most success tonight for Southwestern has been Connor Crisp. Their Absolutely. Sp- their speed back. Mm-hmm. And so he's uh, had, I don't know if he's figured the field out or if He's wearing a longer cleat, or if it's just maybe the, the gait of his step that he takes. But he's certainly been sure-footed. Yep. Uh, and so, you know Coach Foley is businesslike. And so, he's in there in the locker room right now uh, drafting a business plan because he, he plans to, have, to finish the business that he's been conducting throughout this season. Absolutely. Absolutely. Southwestern 10-1. Coming into uh, the region championship, Frederick Douglass six and one. And Michael, we mentioned the uh, the Class Five A uh, Gridiron Bowl, and uh, you know Fairdale and Madison Southern having to uh, having to forfeit due to uh, COVID nineteen. You and I having a, uh, a conversation with Coach. Don't feel great? Just can't wait? Quick Care's open late. Just walk in for accidents and illnesses or for health services like physicals and flu shots. Quick Care Walk-In Clinic at Med Park West for over a decade on Hale Knob Road, just behind the hospital. Since 1988, Toyota of Somerset has been serving and supporting our local communities. We want you to know that we are here for you and your family. Someone you can trust. Someone you can count on. Now and for the better days to come. Trusted, loyal, dedicated, helpful, and consistent. Toyota of Somerset. Come see us or visit us online at toyotaofsomerset.com. The people of this great land are resilient and will get through this. And buying and selling is the real stimulus. Land and real estate are the premium investments and they're not just making any more land. At Ford Brothers Auctioneers, we'll get you the most for your property with live, online, and multi-parcel auctions. Selling farms, homes, developments, and commercial properties for top dollar. Give us a call or online at The Rings Video Game of the Week. I'm Josh McKinney alongside Michael Gregg, boss man uh, Kevin Lord, and Jeremiah Jones. Doing the hard stuff tonight outside in the elements. Great job, Jeremiah. We appreciate you very much. 7-6 as we get set to begin the third. So Warriors begin with the football. Trailing 7-6 on the Randall D. Turpin CPA scoreboard. As we are underway. Purchase on the football. Warrior in the hustle 
back over to get it. Swear returns straight up the gut. And his legs taken out from under him. At around the 25-yard line. First and 10 for Southwestern. Left to right for the blue and orange here. Warriors first chance at it in the third. Trailing 7-6. Region title on the line. Rain has finally subsided. Chilly night. It is December. It could be worse. Football weather. Absolutely. Snot bubbles and all. Wind blowing across the gridiron here at the reservation. Crabtree back to throw. First and ten. Fires, says Hewitt. Will have that pop through his hands. Incomplete second and uh, ten. Is Hewitt, a good season for Southwestern. Unable to secure that one. A lot of Broncos around that football, Josh. And yeah. That was a close call. Yeah. Heavy traffic. And you got to think Hewitt heard some footsteps. He has been a, a bright spot for Coach Foley this year. First onto the scene, it is hard to miss, number 11. Just a sophomore. Mm-hmm. A lot of upside. Crabtree hands it off to Tanner Wright going off left tackle. And uh, not a whole lot there. He's going to set up third and long. That one's too tall, fourth down. Comes the punting unit for Southwestern. See tra- Crabtree, as he was rolling to this side, Michael, being very careful with that footing. Yeah, and he had a defender, you know, on in chase, so right there. Um, but they're onto something there, Josh. They Absolutely. Had, that receiver was open, so um, if they continue to go to that passing game, they may have discovered a few things. Stick that one in your hip pocket. Perkins, the intended target. Chris will lay the toe to it from inside his own 20. Good snap. Connor angles near sideline, and he'll – Rugby booted away, and that'll take a friendly Southwestern hop as Warriors back to kill it. At around the 32, first and 10, Frederick Douglass, 10.49 to go here in the third quarter. First series, second half, it's a punt for Southwestern. See what the Broncos can do, leading by a point in a tight region title game. A white knuckler. Absolutely. We've had a few of those this year, Josh. We have Not indeed. Not quite like these, <laughs> but we've had a few white knucklers. Break out the Maylocks. Covington Catholic, no one's borough, already advancing to the next round, inching ever so closer. State title weekend. First and ten Broncos from their own 32. As it will be thrown over the middle as Pennington will deflect it as Back, trying to put it in the belly of Neil, pulled it out, saw something over the middle, and that was not there. Again, I don't know if he expects a guy to be in that spot, but Broncos have been suspiciously off in the passing game. And it seemed to me, Josh, I think he had a receiver, Roe Pennington. That was just a good defensive play by Roe. He, he saw the ball, and I think next time he may pick that ball off. It's just a great defensive play. Credit. Roflex has had a good season. Neil will get the tote this time. Huge running hole. Stutter step gets him a couple of more before he's uh, taken down by uh, Mink. As yes, that'll set up third down and about three for Douglas. 10 19 to go, third quarter. First series for the Broncos. A lead and a close one. Hand off Neal. Straight up the gut, and there is nothing there because it's Dylan Asher coming off the bottom of the pile, and he had Neal by the ankles. He will fall forward for a yard. Fourth and short. Big time play for Dylan Asher. Frederick going to go quick here. Going to get him to the line. Cornette gets him there and whistles. Come from all over the place, and Southwestern will burn a timeout, a United Cumberland Bank timeout with 9.38 to go in the third. Douglas leads 7-6. 
Conveniently located off North Highway 27 between Big Lots and Backyard Burger, Magic Monograms is the place for custom embroidery, screen printing, and so much more. They can put your designs on medical and athletic uniforms, corporate and school apparel. Find them on Facebook. Search Magic Monograms and Embroidery. And Henderson Chiropractic is committed to relieving your pain using the true principles of chiropractic care. Their caring, helpful team strives for excellence through extraordinary service and patient education. Dr. Henderson provides chiropractic care for injuries that occur during sports, auto accidents, work-related activities, or just everyday wear and tear. The experience you need for the results you want, that's Henderson Chiropractic. Warriors have outscored their opponents 91-47 to in the third quarter. Halftime adjustments, I think, is something that Coach Foley has excelled at. Absolutely. During this football season. Hopefully that trend continues in the third period. 9.38 to go. Warriors taking that timeout. Fourth and short for Douglas here. Fourth and about two is what I'm going to call it. Cornette. Out of the gun, takes the snap. Hands it off to uh, Neal. First guys will miss as he will be, he would have been stopped if they could have got him, but nope, he will squirt loose and get the first down. He is evasive, and he is a really solid running back, one of the best ones we've seen this year. And we've seen Brandon Sloan and others. Yeah, Gentleman from GRC as well. It's going to Louisville. The chains for Douglas. First and ten from their own 45, 9.20 to go third quarter. That takes the snap. Hands it off again to Neal. Angling right side as Maddox Mink will go get him. Another stop. Mink's front side is used up with mud. And the, the, He's upper, on the, back side. the upper part of his shoulders, as you can see him there in the middle of your screen, right where his name plate would be if we were in the NFL. It's the only thing that is not used up for Mink. He has had a Great defensive football game. Second and long. Looking to throw. Fires downfield. That'll be caught at the 35. Racing downfield. Touchdown, Frederick Douglass. As the passing game has been off all night, that one will not be. Big pitch and catch. Cornette. Deep. That will be good. The Dane Key. As Douglas sees that lead increased. What number was the- I thought that was 80. Number identification has been a struggle for me tonight. (laughs) I really think that was 80 or 88. And I don't have an 88, so I'm going to give that to Isaiah Allen. That'll work. And it may be wrong, but that's what I got. That's not who I thought it was either. It's up, it's good. If I get one right tonight, it'll be the first time. Here for the point after. 14-6. I was counting on the spot, PA. Interest. Go ahead. Interest Counseling has made it their mission to be the trusted leader in promoting mental wellness in our communities through individualized care. Stay healthy at home with counseling and case management. So I really think that's who that was. I, I don't have – I'm almost positive it was at 12, dang key. We will send it away. Turnable from the 15. The 30, running room here for Southwestern. Breaking it loose down near sideline is where Stutter step taken down at around the 20-yard line. Big time return for Southwestern. That's a big answer after a Frederick Douglass touchdown. Ian Ware on the return. I'm having no problems with our boys, but I have struggled all night with Douglass for some dad blame reason. Warriors sitting pretty here. First and 10 from their own 23-yard line. 63-yard return by Mr. Ware. That was excellent. 14-6. Warriors looking to answer. A Douglas touchdown. First Douglas touchdown since 5-13 to go in the opening quarter. Crabtree backs all around him. And off. The Warriors will keep it on the ground. Then it'll be short games. They will unpile. Tanner Wright on the carry. As that will get the Warriors into the Rick Barker red zone. 
First visit tonight for Southwestern. And Crystal Walter ran through it earlier. He did. Laces to the football on the 20. Grab tree. Operate hands up under center. Split backs behind him. Storm side of the line to the left. Chris lost the football. It's on the deck. And Frederick Douglas going to come up with the turnover. As Frederick Douglas will turn Southwestern over. And that is tough. As Chris had it put in at his belly. Just popped out of there. Mm, bad to worse for the Blue and Orange. 7.39 to go in the third. Douglas just scoring, looking for more. Mm. Yeah, it's tough. Tough break. Second turnover of the night for Southwestern. Two of those laid on the deck. Douglas with a chance here to extend the 14-6 lead. Cornette surveys the Southwestern defense. He will hand it off to Neal. Being careful with his footing. It's a short game for Neal. His uniform is nearly used up. One of his linemen will come dig some, dig some mud with a face mask. Big possession right here. As Douglas just scored. Looking to hang another one on Southwestern. And looking to throw wide open. That'll be complete at 25 up to the 30. The 36-yard line. First down, Broncos. Who's that one? Tackle by Warren Pennington. <laughs> Jakari Cowherd? Yes. I wasn't going to say anything. I'm afraid to say anything. <laughs> that's what I've got. That's, that's, yep. we, we didn't get much on Frederick Douglas. So we, we did not. We can only go off what we have. We did not. That was Cowherd. First and ten for the Broncos. Still on their own side of the field as he'll get his number called again. Makes the first guy miss. A couple more will wrap him up. He'll squirt loose. Nope, not done yet. Still going. First down pitch and catch. As again, Cornette going to Cowherd. Double back-to-back -back catches. And he showed some elusiveness there, Josh. What did he? Looked like about four different Warriors had him wrapped up. He just kept slipping out of that one. Move the chains for Douglas. First and ten Broncos from their own 47. Under six and a half to play in the third. Wildcat set. Yes, that will be on the ground. Angling right side is done. Yes. And we'll check in for Cornette. And that'll move the chain, so we will see if Cornette will come back out. Well, he was going to. Not this play. He will stay on the far sideline. Yes. Grant is a tall lad. Hard to miss him. He's a helmet higher than most everybody. As we'll hand that one off to, to Neil. A little bit there. Second and eight. A gain of two. By Neil. Asher, Harmon, and Brainerd in on the stop. 5.38 to go. You can sense how important this drive is. Because it is. Second and about eight. As Dunn will keep it himself straight up the gut. Man, he's got some speed, and he is going to the house. Touchdown, Frederick Douglass. 35-yard touchdown run by Cameron Dunn. Makes it a 20-6 Douglas advantage. Wheels falling off here early in this third quarter. 
Ooh. Southwestern got to buckle down. They're really behind the eight ball now. Back-to-back -back scores for Douglas. That one with 5-17 to go here in the third. We are on for the PAT. It is up, and it is good. 21-6, Frederick Douglas increases their lead, and that one coming off Southwestern turnover. Mm. Mm -mm. 2020 has been a crazy year, and a lot of things have changed, but some things stay the same or get even better. Like Somerset Community College's commitment to students, we are committed to offering a high-quality education, a personal experience with great faculty and staff, and the lowest tuition in the state. SCC offers online, hybrid, and in-person classes and makes it easy for students to enroll. Somerset Community College offers classes in 8, 12, and 16-week sessions. SCC's campuses and centers are safe, clean, and ready to welcome you. And Modern Systems is going to support our sponsor our defender of the game at the conclusion of tonight's game. And since 1979, Modern Systems has been defending communities all across Kentucky, and they are proud to be part of the communities they serve. Committing time and sponsorships to numerous charities like Project 5810, Relay for Life, March of Dimes, Heartwalk, local school programs, and many more. Modern Systems, your neighbors and your friends, and they work 24-7 to protect the things that matter most to you, from homes to businesses to schools and churches. Let Modern Systems be your trusted name in security. 21-6 on the Randall D. Turpin CPA school board. The Broncos increasing that lead on the Warriors. As the turn man will muff that one. Pick it up as that's where you're trying to Find some running room, and there will not be anything there as he'll be trapped inside the 10. Warriors take over. First and 10 for the Blue and Orange on a long field with 5.02 to go. See, and looking for some running room, and lining up on this near side. Had to go a long way to get it, Greg, as he had to go get it and then try to set it back up coming to this side. Seen that a couple times tonight. And again, Southwestern has lived – Right here on this field, right yeah. here in front of our box. 21-6. Douglas with the lead. Reads and title on the line. An uphill climb now. Foley's boys. Crabtree operating out of the gun. Walden goes in motion. Right to left. Hand off. Tanner right. Straight up the gut. Hand off Moving the, the right. Moving the pile. Second down. Second and short again of about three. Second and seven. Game far from over, but Southwestern needing to move the football on this drive. Yeah. Get some confidence, get some momentum back on their side. Second and seven for the Warriors. They're going 15, four and a half to play in the third quarter. Break the huddle. Ten seconds to go on the play clock. We're back bone set behind Crabtree. Four seconds to go. Crabtree takes the snap. And he will hand it off. Tanner Ride, a couple spin moves. Gets him positive yardage. We'll get up to around the 21, 22 yard line. Just short. First down on the indication. Third and less than a yard. Makes the stop. One to four minutes to play. First down, Warriors. They'll eye it, and then they'll move it. <laughs> we'll take it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Better late than never, I guess. Crabtree hands up under center again. Three and a half to go in the third. Put into the belly. And Western running back, Christian Walden, who has the lone score tonight for Southwestern. Josh, he was probably lucky to have held on to that football because yeah. it looks like his feet left him as soon as he touched the football. Gain of one, second and nine. It has been tough sledding all around tonight. Clock winding, three minutes to go. Warriors trail 21-6. 7-6 at the half. Back-to-back -back scores for Frederick Douglass has opened it up for the Broncos. Second and long. Handoff. Goes to Tanner Ryan. 
was trying to come to the near home sideline and get the corner, and it was just completely shut down and denied of that corner. And that was because Commodore was there awaiting Mr. Rye. Give him no gain on the tote. Third and nine. Clock winds. 2.19 to go third quarter. 7-6 at the end of one. 7-6 at the half. Douglas with back-to-back scores. Cornett to Allen. And then Dunn. Checking in for Cornett. Running quarterback spot. Crabtree looking to throw. Fires one far sideline. Receiver makes the adjustment. That's Hewitt with the uh, pitch and catch as he will get to Douglas' 41-yard line. Nice pass play. Crabtree sets, fires. Nice adjustment by Hewitt to come back and get it. Flop the field for the Warriors. First and 10 Southwestern as they invade Douglas territory. Yeah, that was a really nice play. You were bragging on Hewitt, young sophomore earlier. He's showing you right here why he's such a talent on the football field. And as you mentioned, just a sophomore. Minute 50 to go, third quarter. Warriors trying to rally. Back set. As handoff goes to Walden. Give it inside left tackle for positive yardage. With a minute and a half to go. Gain of we'll give him three. And we'll set it down. Second and uh, seven. Minute 20 to play. 21-6 on the Randall D. Turpin CPA school board. Thanks for joining us for Buffalo Wings and Rings video game of the week. I got you. Mossman is uh, feverishly working on things. If we lose our feet, hang with us. We will be right back. And we're working on a multitude of things here. Second and long. That one stays on the ground. Tanner Wright with carry. That'll set up third down and manageable for Southwestern with under a minute to go. Third and about three. Good pickup for Tanner on that tote. Once man working feverishly, we appreciate Kevin Lloyd, Kelly, and everybody at Lake Cumberland Sports. It is a treat and a pleasure to be with you. In the year that has been topsy-turvy, we have appreciated every single game. We appreciate the opportunity here at Lake Cumberland Sports. The pitch, as that's Tanner. Coming near sideline, right with some running room. First down yards and more as he gets inside the Rick Barker red zone. First and ten, the Warriors putting a drive together as the third close to coming to a conclusion. 11 seconds to go, third quarter. Clock will wind. Warriors have to hustle to get another one off here in the third. As Crabtree will bring him to the line with three seconds to go. That was Tanner on the carry. As the Warriors will get one off as the horn sounds. That one will stay on the ground and goes to Tanner. And he will be shut down with nothing. And that will set it up second and ten for Southwestern. As the third quarter is in the books. That was a favorable third quarter for Frederick Douglass as they scored Twice in that third stanza, and they lead 21-6 on the Randall D. Turpin CPA school board. The Warriors in the Rick Barker red zone. Obviously, Foley's boys will not go away quietly. Thanks for joining us for Quick Care Walk-In Clinic at Med Park West High School That's football. That's a USB-C. You don't need that, do you? Buffalo Wings and Rings video game of the week. Douglas scoring with 8.35 to go in the third. Cornette to Allen, we think, on the reception, 13-6. <laughs> Here's the point after it's good, 14-6. How far was that touchdown pass? I indicated to – On out for Allen, but we think. Yes. Let me reload my page here. I'm so sorry about that. Um Fifty-two yards. Thanks, sir. You got a housekeeping for me. The other touchdown for uh, Douglas with five seventeen to go in the quarter. Thirty-five yard touchdown run by Dunn. 
who checked in for Cornette. It's a fruitful series. 26. There's extra. Was good. 21 6. As we start the final frame, the Warriors going to fight for it here in the end. Trying to keep their season alive. Second and 10. Blue and orange. Now, right to left. Your Wildcats set. Chris will take the snap. And whistles. Stop it before it got going. Mm. Going to be a false start on Southwestern. Mm. Yep, you're right. You can say that for me. Second and 15 now. Tough to have that happen to you coming out of the yeah. quarter. and Kind of like the drive to start the third quarter, you know? Yeah. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Second and long, Warriors behind the chains. Dealing with rain earlier. And it's definitely since subsided. The wind is gone as well. Second and long, Warriors going to have to hurry under 10 seconds to go on the play clock. And they will hustle to the line. Three seconds to go. And we'll get it off. Crabtree looking to throw. Fires near sideline. Making the adjustment. A flag will fly. Flags all over the place. And it's incomplete. But you know what will be coming. When I say there's laundry on the field, there's laundry everywhere. <laughs> Everybody that had a flag through that one. Crabtree looking to hook up with Ian Ware. And get the Warriors a little bit closer. Clock stop with 11.53 to go. In the fourth. Pass, pass interference on Douglas. The Warriors threatening. Josh, I'm going to be very honest. Now that that uh, play has uh, been decided, I thought they were going to call that on Southwestern. Because that was a close. That was bang, bang down there. It was. That was two guys battling for position. I could see what you're saying. I absolutely could. Well, not be an automatic first down. Second and short. As inside handoff Southwestern. Goes to get. Yes, he'll get a yard, maybe two. Third and short. Eleven thirty to go. In the fourth, Perkins will check in for the Warriors. Where we check out. Every second, running away makes it tougher for Southwest. Trailing 21 6. Third and short. And more whistles. As Frederick Douglas will take the United Cumberland Bank timeout with 11.09 to go in the fourth quarter. Broncos lead 21 6 on the Randall D. Turpin CPA scoreboard. Brad Carroll and all the staff at CC's Furniture are proud supporters of all local football teams in our Lake Cumberland area. It is our hope here at CC's Furniture that all the coaches and all the student athletes have a successful and injury-free season. Come visit us at CC's Furniture where we'll be glad to help you with all of your home furnishing needs. Are you frustrated with your bank's long drive through lines and poor customer service? If your bank has recently consolidated to a single location, Citizens National Bank is here to earn your business. With seven locations in Pulaski County, you're sure to find one that's convenient to you. Visit our website at cnbsummerset.com to find the nearest branch. For the past 100 years, Citizens National Bank has been a constant in this community. We are here to stay. Citizens National Bank, moving forward together, member FDIC. Third and short facing the Warriors here. Third and three. Number 09 to go fourth quarter. Broncos lead 21-6. Douglas credited with that United Cumberland Bank timeout. Warriors looking for the Citizens National Bank touchdown here. As Connor Chris straight up the gut. And Connor streaks to the end zone for six. Warriors. A little bit closer with 11.05 to go in the fourth. Don't go away just yet. 
Connor Crisp, his first touchdown of the night. And again, Connor Crisp just must have a higher quality cleat than anybody else on the field because he has not seemed to be bothered by the field conditions as much as others. And you kind of mentioned it at the half. Might be his stride. He looks incredibly comfortable yeah. running in it. Touchdown tote by Crisp. Makes it 21-12. Two-point conversion. As Crabtree rolls near sideline, fires to the end zone. Is that one too tall? As flag will fly. As Crabtree looking to hook up with Perkins. See what that flag is. And away pass interference on Douglas. And Wolves have another shot at it. Warriors are going for two on their first touchdown. That was no good on a tote by Brainerd. Kind of seals their fate here going for two. Trailing 21-12 to try to get it to one possession. 11 5 to go in the fourth. Warriors defense going to have to get a stop. Handoff goes to right. Angling. Right side of the line. Two-point conversion is good by Tanner Wright. That was a big one. 21-14. Southwestern clawing back in it. Join us after the game on Facebook for Out Blakely Post Game Show. As our, my colleague Josh McKinney will be catching up to Coach Jason Foley at the conclusion of tonight's contest, as he does after every contest. Want well, a big thank you to Coach Foley for allowing us to do that. SUV season continues at Out in Blakely Ford. That means savings for you on the great lineup of Ford SUV 2020 Eco Sport, Escape, Edge, Explorer, and Expedition. Also, they have a great selection of quality pre owned vehicles priced for any budget. Getting the counseling help you need has never been easier. Interest Counseling is now providing counseling and case management services using your phone or computer. Give them a call at 606-676-0638 or visit their website at www.intrust-healthcare.com to get services started today from anywhere in Kentucky. Big shot of mojo directly into the arm of the blue and orange there. One possession game, 21-14, 11.05 to go. In the fourth on the Randall D. Turpin CPA scoreboard. John Riola. That's a teed up. He'll send it away. Crowd getting rowdy. For the first time in a while. 8-4. Converges. And sends it away. That will stay on the deck. And Bronco will fall on it. At around the 37-yard line. Southwestern defense trotting back onto the field. The Warrior D looking to get a stop and get the football back. Man, that was that was a big, big-time series for Southwestern. Yeah, they needed that. Uh, clock now at 11.04 here in the fourth quarter. They needed that. They needed that momentum. They got it. Josh, can they, can they stand up defensively uh, and keep Frederick Douglass out of the end zone? Got to have that, that solid secondary. And got to hope that Cornette misses the mark. Has, he hasn't been on target quite like normal tonight, but he's always effective. Going quarterback, Neil, with the carry. At the backfield, he'll run forward for a short gain as Pennington went to get him. Short gain, give him two, second and eight. An initial penetration by a warrior, getting to Neil. He was hard to take down. Josh Tanner right now is back playing safety. A position I don't know that I've seen him play this year. You're looking for athletes. You got one there. You betcha. Dunn checking back into the game. He'll call his own number. Scored a touchdown earlier. No touchdown on that one. as a short gainer as the Warriors had that one. Defended nicely. As Pennington and Maddox Mink, who is heavily favoring that right arm, that right shoulder. Matter of fact, he's just got it draped on his hip. He's not even moving that thing, and he ain't about to come out. Mink has played his tail off. Third down here for Douglas. Third at about six. 
Cornette buys Lonesome in the gun, looking to throw. Fires, low throw, and they will say that will be caught. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. As that one was right on top. We're playing service here at Southwestern. Where we'll get the stop was Dane Key on the reception. More importantly, moves the chains there for Frederick Douglass. Man, that was close. That was close. He must have had his fingernails underneath of it. Move the chains, clock winds, nine and a half to play. Douglas with the football on the lead, 21-14. Hand off Neal, straight up the gut, lowers his head, runs forward, mm, about a handful. Warriors coming down, it's going to be Pennington. And Brainerd, second and five. Just a one possession game, Warriors defense needing to get that football back. As Cornette directing Neal to his right. One man front for the Warriors. Neal, met, dropped. Hello, Mr. Neal. Meet Gideon Brainerd. Meek and Ware in on the action as well. I think it was Gideon Brainerd that hit him right as he got the ball. He was the first guy to the football. He absolutely was. Brainerd had that played perfectly. Third down. As so we get a sideline warning on Southwestern. Can we please get rid of that call? Sideline warning against the Broncos. Oh, I'll say the Broncos, sorry. I thought he signaled Southwestern. We can keep it as long as it's against the Broncos. Still, can we get rid of that? <laughs> <laughs> I hate the sideline warning. I'll be honest with you, it's like holding. You can call it any time you want to. But that favors Southwestern, so... Big third down. I agree with you, fellas. Third and long. Cornette takes the handoff. Under pressure. Ooh. Gets away from two would-be sacks. Fires downfield. Throw too far to his intended target. As that'll be fourth down for the Broncos. Again, key. The intended receiver. Here comes the punting unit from Frederick Douglass. boy, Southwestern defense. Fourth and ten for the Broncos from their own 48-yard line. Warrior defense did what they needed to do. Good pressure, Southwestern. Brought against Cornette. The Warriors had a shot at him, couldn't get him down. And again, Cornette, a tough footing, hadn't been accurate to nine. You understand why. Tough playing conditions. That's a rookie style punt. Line drive. Takes a friendly Douglas hop. And will die at the 19-yard line. 7.52 to go in the fourth. Warriors with a chance to tie late in this one. Region championship on the line. 21-14 on the Randall D. Turpin CPA school board. Warrior defense did what you needed them to do. They did. Can Southwestern move this football and put themselves in a position to tie this football game? Well, there is one gentleman, one young man that you've talked about tonight that looks like he's just he's just easy breezy. Connor Chris. Yeah. And I, I will say Ben Coomer, young freshman number 30, has just checked in. Um, for those that are listening, Coach Foley likes to say, I mean, he's one of the better lead blockers on this football team as a freshman. This is what his role is right here. He's in the front back in a set of three as the Warriors will keep it on the ground. As that'll be Chris on the toe. Give him a handful. Second and five. Keep clicking those off, five apiece. You know the end result. It's a nice recipe. Absolutely. 7.30 to go. Clock winding. Warriors looking for... The Citizens National Bank touchdown here in the fourth. Single score out of the way in the first quarter. Douglas with back-to-back -back scores in the third. Warriors the score with 11.05 to go here in the fourth. Back three. 
Hands up under center. Hermson hands it off. Chris looking for some running room. Hold on to that football, young man. As he'll move forward to around the 28, 29-yard line. That pile still moving. As this one is getting hot late. Because it is a one-possession game. The region title is on the line. In the four, third, and one. Unfortunately, a, a team with just one loss coming into tonight will be done yeah. after this one is over. Same way it was last week. Absolutely. Third and short. Warriors need to pick up the first down on their own side of the field. That's paramount here. As, again, we'll stay on the deck. As that'll be a first down. Connor Chris, a steady diet of C.C. Ryder. Turner Realty Group, first down for the Warriors. Chains move. Stopped as those chains move. Now it'll fire again with that signal. Six minutes to go. Warriors with the football, trying to put a drive together. And Douglas being challenged, Josh, like they have not been challenged really all season. Warriors giving themselves a puncher's chance. That's all you could ask for. And off goes to Brainerd. Sweeping right side, looking for some running room. He'll turn it upfield for three, four, maybe five. All depends on the spot. Second down. Five and a half to play. They'll give him four. Second and six. Other than that first loss of the season, I might add, from Frederick Douglass, Southwestern, giving these Broncos all they want. Warriors full. So players in and out. Approaching five minutes to go. Second and six. Warriors right to left to finish this one up. Crabtree will bring them to the line. Taking the end of the backfield for Southwestern. Ethan Ware. He will get the pitch. Coming this side, looking for the corner. Stringing it this side. He will not get it, and he'll be slung down by Bronco. That was just stringing it out to the near sideline. Stringing, stringing, stringing. Is where we'll lose a couple. Third and eight. 4.40 to go. Third and long. We're going to check out Christian Walden back in. Pay attention here. Big moment late here in the fourth. Yep. Under four and a half to play. Southwestern facing a third and long. Used to call it third and nine on the Randall D. Turpin CPA school board. Pitch, Tanner right. Sweeping right. Looking for the corner. And there's just nothing there on that far sideline. Right. Douglas Athletic can move east-west. That'll be fourth down. Under four minutes to go. What do you do here, Josh? No doubt it's four down territory. Yeah. You have no choice. That I see anyway, but again, I said it earlier, I'm not a smart man. 21-14. Warriors trying to, to dial up a little magic here on fourth and long. Power back set. Home folks, get after it. This jumps. Crabtree looks... Coach Foley, eight seconds to go on the play clock. Crappy surveys, four seconds to go. Chandler back to throw, looking near sideline. He has Hewitt. Hewitt makes the adjustment. Flags will fly as Hewitt going for the pass. Another flag will fly back downfield. Hopefully that's nothing. And the defender for the Broncos, not a happy camper. McNeil thought he had that one defended well. Hewitt making the adjustment. We wait the call. And that will be on Frederick Douglass. And the sideline warning on Southwestern. And it will be first and ten for the Warriors from the midfield stripe with 318 left in this one. 
Take a swig of the Maalox. I was going to say, did you pack the <laughs> Pepto this month? <laughs> we got it. <laughs> Take a swig. Pass it on down. Warriors with the football driving late. 21-14 on the Randall D. Turpin CPA school board. Off of the Wings and Rings video game of the week. Our back set. Brainerd fakes. As that will be the second running back. It's crisp. Short game. Brainerd sold that one extremely well. He did. I thought he had that football, as did several Bronco defenders. Crabtree, a little Houdini action on that one. Second and short. Second and eight. Warriors at the Bronco. 48. 2.45 to go. Warriors trail by seven. And that one does go to Brainerd. Straight up the gut. He'll get to the 45. Wrapped up and dropped by host of Broncos. Third and five. Look. Ticking away. 2.24 left in this one. Warriors methodical. Driving. Giving themselves a chance late against Frederick Douglass. Crabtree out of the gun. Third and five. Crabtree. Looks to the sideline. Surveys. Takes the snap. Looking to throw. Looking for Hibbert. Hibbert fell as he made that cut inside. The footing just not there. Pass incomplete. That'll stop the clock with a minute 53 to go. And the Warriors facing another fourth down here. Mm -mm -mm. Like the play call. The footing was not there for Mason as he went to cut. And again, we're, we're doing video so you can see. I was going to say. They're in probably the toughest part of this field. We're at Southwestern at where they have been all night long. Or where they have lived. Fourth and five. Warriors looking to convert another fourth down. Trailing 21-14. Trips to the right, one to the left. Grab tree out of the gun. Whistles and a timeout. Southwestern will take that United Cover the Bank timeout. A UCB TO. With a minute 51 to play. Skip Control's Tire Pros offers a straightforward approach to tire and auto service that includes nationwide warranties and a hassle free experience. Did you know Skip Control's makes automotive services easy with their online appointment booking as well as special financing available? Let Skip Cottrell's Tire Pros get you back to when being on the move was carefree. Skip Cottrell's Tire Pros, hassle-free, guaranteed. To find out more, visit us in the store at 4285 South Highway 27 in Somerset or online at skipstirepros.com. And Henderson Chiropractic is committed to relieving your pain using the true principles of chiropractic care. Their caring, helpful team strives for excellence through extraordinary service and patient education. Dr. Henderson provides chiropractic care for injuries that occur during sports, auto accidents, work-related activities, or just everyday wear and tear. The experience you need for the results you want. That's Henderson Chiropractic. Make a note, Michael Gregg. Brody Perkins has checked in. Okay. Minute 53 left in the fourth. Warriors facing a fourth and five. They trail 21-14 on the Randall D. Turpin CPA school board. Trying to keep the drive and their season alive. Crabtree operates, hands up under center. Strong side of the line to the right. Crabtree takes the snap, rolls under pressure, fires. That'll be complete. I think that's Brainerd. I'm not for sure because that uniform is used up. All that matters is that is a Turner Realty Group first down for Southwestern. It looks like Brainerd's body tight. Yeah, I thought so too. First and 10 Warriors. Minute 43 to go. Clock stops as the chains move. Another fourth down conversion for the Warriors. Man, oh man. They locked the theatrics. My goodness. First and 10 Southwestern from the Douglas 31. 90 seconds left in this one. Warriors driving. Looking to tie. Crabtree hands up under center. Hands it off. Near sideline. Yes, that'll be Tanner Wright. Taking it up to around 
the 20 yard line. Yes. Looking for the spot. Move the chains. Another l and or excuse me, Turner Realty Group. First down. Minute 18 to play. Warriors driving. Clock winds. Crabtree brings them to the line. Slip backs behind him. Crabtree looking to throw. Fires one. Far sideline. Receiver makes the adjustment and making the catch. What a catch. Hewitt. Go get it, kid. First and go, Warriors, with 67 seconds to go. Watch this pass from Crabtree. Makes the adjustment. Nice stretch. Hewitt. Big time reception. First and goal, Warriors. Southwestern in the Rick Barker red zone. At the three. Hold on to this ball. Absolutely. Power back. Wishbone set. Crabtree hands up under center. Turns. Hands it off. Spin move. Touchdown. Connor Crisp. 21-20. Southwestern pulls to within a point. 51.9 seconds to go in this one. It is a one possession ball game. Oh. What does the gambler do? Well, I think you just said it. The gambler. <laughs> Boss man says two. And there goes Crabtree on the field. Warrior's going to try to win it here. And you can hear Warrior Nation. Three yard touchdown for Southwestern. Crabtree hands up under center. Warriors looking for their first lead of the night. And Frederick Douglass will talk about it. 21-20, 51.9 seconds to go. Let's keep it right here. This Holy is unbelievable. Cow. We are in a position here to take the lead. 51.9 on the clock. This Warrior team displaying a Warrior mentality by every sense of the definition. Trail 21-6 at the end of three. That was a huge touchdown run. Mm, yeah. So, Josh, let's talk about play call right here. What do you do? Your most successful runner this you know, tonight, we've talked about this several times, has been Connor Crisp. He's a young man, just scored the last touchdown. Mm -hmm. Gideon Brainerd has, through the course of the year, if you're rolling statistics and odds for the regular season, this is definitely Gid Brainerd ter territory. I don't know. We'll let Foley's boys figure it out and decide this one, Josh. Jason Foley likes to gamble. I like the call. Huge drive late in this one. Go for the win at home. The Warriors are doing that. Going for the two-point conversion. Power back set. Strong side of the line to the left. The pitch to Chris. Sweeping left. Denied first effort, second effort. Pile moves, and he is going to be denied. Denied as Douglas celebrates, and they're still trying to unpile him. Mm. As the two-point conversion fails, and a flag will fly late. Mm. Connor looking for it, looking for it. That second surge coming from that pile just did not get there. I think, I think I saw Asher <laughs> trying to carry him into the end zone. <laughs> As that penalty will be on Southwestern. 21-20. Two-point conversion fails. Well, Josh, I, I'm going to need therapy at the conclusion of this game. Amen, brother. And fortunately for us, one of our age, one of our sponsors uh, can help with that. So Absolutely. Interest Counseling has made it their mission to be the trusted leader in promoting mental wellness in our communities through individualized care. Stay healthy at home with counseling and case management services using your phone or computer. Call them at 606-676-0638 to get services started today from anywhere in Kentucky. Visit their Facebook page at Entrust Healthcare Counseling for all their latest updates and giveaways. Mm -mm -mm. Warriors trail by a point, 21-20. Penalty will back the Warriors up. Last shot at it will be this onside kick. Warriors recover. They will be sitting on a long field. Man, what a fight. 
A lot of folks didn't give Southwestern even a puncher's chance in this one. They punched and punched. Loyola has it teed up. Ready to put the leg to it. Ready to play whistle blows. Loyola urges on the football. So that will be over the initial line and whistles. Yes. I'll assume Southwestern started early. Warriors trying to get it over the initial wall and outrace the Broncos to it. That'll back the Warriors up more to the penalty. 51.9 seconds to go. What a game. Great game. Douglas. Back-to-back -back scores in the third. Warriors are back-to-back -back scores here in the fourth. My last two-point conversion. Just falling short. <clears throat> so Warriors will kick this one. From their own 20. As Brainerd will do the honor this time. Traditional onside kick went too far on him as Douglas will fall on it at the Southwestern 43-yard line. 50.6 seconds left in this one. Douglas had to claw for it. That is for sure. What a valiant comeback. Southwestern trailing 21-6 at the end of three. Mm-mm-mm. No doubt about it. This one will be remembered for a while. Warrior mentality. Man. First and ten. For Douglas. Is it call for the snap and it will be dribbled to him. That'll be second down. Clock winds. And now it will stop. As Southwestern will burn a timeout. Second down. There will be a trophy presentation for the yes. region runner up. It's a United Cumberland, Cumberland Bank timeout for the blue and orange. 41 and a half seconds. No Joey Mudville tonight. No. Southwestern. They gave her a heck of an effort, though. They did. They sure did. And all season long. All season long. It has been exciting. It has. And I've told Coach Jason Foley this, and Michael Gregory and I talked about this. Coach Foley is great for ratings. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. Never quit. And I've heard him mention this week unfinished business. And unfortunately, this season, he's going to leave with a little unfinished business on the table here tonight. Josh, you and I are going to need to talk about a player of the game here. At the conclusion of tonight's contest, which is rapidly approaching. Victory formation is quarterback hits a knee. That'll be third down. Or is unable to stop the clock. The average of three seconds in the play clock and game clock. And that will be all she wrote. And uh, this one is Douglas will not have to uh, snap it another time. Douglas making the trip to uh, Southwestern. If they thought it was going to be easy, it wasn't. As, Anything but. Absolutely. As uh, Douglas will escape the reservation with a 21-20 uh, victory. Your uh, final score as Douglas advances in the uh, KHSAA uh, Gridiron Bowl. They improve to 7-1 uh, and one on the year now, riding a seven-game winning streak since their season opening loss. Second straight regional championship now 2-0 over Southwestern in as many years as Southwestern sees a, uh, a great season come to a conclusion at 10-2 and two. Uh, region runner up for uh, Southwestern here in 2020-21-20 uh, your uh, final score is Frederick Douglas wins it it was 7-6 
at the end of one. 7-6 at the half. We'll pick it up from uh, that point as Douglas scores their first of two touchdowns in the third. And first coming with 8.35 to go, a 52-yard touchdown pass. Went out to Allen, we still think. 13-6, the uh, extra point. Veer uh, is good, 14-6. And then Douglas scores again with 5.17 to go in the third quarter. A uh, 35-yard touchdown run by uh, Dunn, who checked in for Cornette. That made it 26 Extra point, good. 21-6, Douglas on top of Southwestern. Through three, and you thought that might have been all she wrote. That was not the case for Coach Foley's boys. As the Warriors score uh, twice in the fourth. 11.05 to go. Their first touchdown in the uh, fourth quarter. Touchdown run by Connor Chris makes it 21-12. Nice two-point conversion, good. 21-14, Southwestern. To within a possession. The defense needed to get a stop, and the defense got that stop. Warrior offense got the football back. They score with 51 seconds to go in the contest. A three-yard touchdown run by uh, Connor Crisp, his second touchdown of the night. Both of those coming in the uh, final frame. That makes it 21-20, the two-point conversion as they went back to Mr. Steady tonight, that being Connor Crisp. As he uh, runs it left, that two-point conversion fails Douglas runs out the rest of the clock, 21-20. Your final score as the Broncos advance on in the KHSAA Gridiron Bowl. Josh, Michael? I'll go over some statistics on the evening. So total offense, Frederick Douglas wins that battle, 303 to Southwestern's 266. Uh, passing yards, Frederick Douglas has 164 to Southwestern 76. Rushing yards, Frederick Douglas 139 to Southwestern's 190. Uh, Penalties, Frederick Douglass penalized six times for 65 yards. Southwestern two for 10, so penalties did not hurt the Warriors tonight. Turnovers, uh, Frederick Douglass had one, Southwestern had two. And turnovers in the playoffs, uh, they can get costly, and they did prove costly in the third quarter to Southwestern. Yeah. Uh, individually, uh, some individual statistics for Frederick Douglass. Uh, the QB, Sam Cornette, was nine out of 18 for 164 yards. Um, 164 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. His counterpart, Chandler Crabtree, five out of 11 for 76 yards. Uh, and some of those big chunks of yardage were actually gained by attempted passes that were called for pass interferences. So they're not going to show up on Crabtree's uh, stat line. Rushing the football for Frederick Douglass, Dar- Darius Neal, 21 attempts, 101 yards. Cameron Dunn, four for 54, and that touchdown in the third quarter. For Southwestern, Tanner Wright, 17 rushes, 76 yards. Uh, Connor Crisp, 11 rushes, 71 yards, and two TDs. Christian Walden had three for 35 in the touchdown. And Gideon Brainerd had eight rushes for 12 yards uh, on the evening. Uh, receiving the football, uh, and again, this could be wrong on the Isaiah Allen. I have Isaiah Allen with run, one reception for 52 and a touchdown. Dane Key, four receptions for 50 yards. Jakari Cowherd, two for 26. EJ Klinkscale, one for 20 and a touchdown. And Deacon Crotus, one for 16. Uh, for Southwestern, Caden Hewitt played big. Uh, two receptions for 52 yards. That real pretty catch here late in the fourth quarter. Mason Hibbert had one reception for 15. Gideon Brainerd one for 13. Uh, and, Josh, that's the statistics for tonight's game. Um, we're Time to give out some hardware. Uh, for our offense, I think it's a little easier than it is defensively. Yeah. Uh, offensively, we're going to go Connor Crisp. Uh, I don't think we've had a player all year that's had back-to-back players of the game. Uh, but I think tonight – Connor Chris, you got to give it to him. He had two rushing touchdowns. Seemed to handle the the field better than anybody on the field. Absolutely, and give an attaboy to Kane Hewitt. And Adam, absolutely, Kane you know? Hewitt. Um, he was huge. Southwestern is going to graduate Connor Crisp. Yeah. Kane, Kane Hewitt's got two more years. Yeah. I got a feeling <laughs> Kane Hewitt's going to oh, yeah. uh, make a lot of highlights on this football field. So our Somerset Community College offensive player of the game, Connor Crisp, defensively, guy. I mean, it's it's hard. Um, our modern systems defender of the game going to go with uh, senior leader of the defensive squad, uh, Rowan Pennington. We call Rowe's name a lot. We called Dylan Asher's name a lot. Uh, we had uh, we called Cody Harmon's name a lot. Those three Warriors are all seniors, all going to be missed on this Warrior squad next next season. But our def- our modern systems defender of the game tonight, Rowan Pennington. He leaves everything he has on the football field every single week. Tonight, no different. 
Uh, congratulations, Rowan, on a fantastic career. Absolutely. It's been a pleasure to cover you. Absolutely. And an attaboy on the defensive side to Maddox Mink. And an attaboy to Maddox Mink. You know, and, and, again, like we mentioned, uh, Dylan Asher, um, uh, several Warriors um, that really, you know, Christian Kelly – was winning the Dirty Jersey Award real early. <laughs> Christian <laughs> Kelly was all over this field tonight, too. So a lot of Warriors uh, left it all out there. Business-like attitude, business-like approach. Uh, unfortunately, they're going to leave the season with some unfinished business um, here. But regional runner-up, nothing to hang your hat on. Fantastic year. Josh, it's been a pleasure all season. Absolutely, my thank, friend. Thank our sponsors for making this possible. Thank the boss man, Kevin Lloyd mm -hmm. and Jeremiah Jones for excellent camera work. Um, he's Josh McKinney. I'm Michael Gregg. We're going to get out on the field and catch up with Coach Jason Foley for the last time during this football season. Um, listeners, we appreciate you. Join us again next season. Go Warriors.